Abraham, I need you to kill your son. His son Abraham goes to the top of the mountain, takes out the dagger. April Fool. Yeah. <laughs> hey, gotcha. Gotcha. You should see the look on your son's face. <laughs> uh, you were going to do it, wasn't you? Yeah. Right, slide dog. Come on down. Welcome back to Macrodosing. What's up? It's Tuesday. It's April 2nd. As we're recording this, it's April Fool's Day. Um, Caitlin Clark has been ruled out for tonight's game with an elbow injury. That was a good one that I think it was Overtime Sports tweeted that out. And they're like, gotcha. Good joke. How how, how long are we going to keep? Is this going to be a thing forever? I think the yeah. internet ruined April Fool's. Mm-hmm. It's, I, you yeah. know what it's it is? so it's, tired. It's uh, brands ruined April Fool's. Yeah. Capitalism ruined April Fool's. Logan Paul had a tweet. He's like, we just came out with fried chicken flavored prime energy drink. And it's like, okay, back in my day. Yeah, but hear him out. (laughs) Hear him out. Like it might be, I don't know. I'd try it. I I would try it, but he he clearly has no plans on actually making it. He just wanted to tweet out a funny joke on April 1st. The thing that sucks is is that none of them are ever good. They're so stupid. And like, obviously, like it's just, it's dumb. My favorite growing up was... uh, it was in the Washington Post. Taco Bell did like a full page ad and Taco Bell said that they bought the Liberty Bell and it would now be called the Taco Liberty Bell. And everybody was like, is this real? <laughs> we, were, we were so dumb back then. But now I think every, that's the, yeah, that's the thing. It was like the premise of it was, oh, shit, it is April Fool's. But like now it's like your phone tells you every single morning. You know what I mean? Like it's and the jokes fly. So it's just not even April well, Fool's. Not good used to kick ass though i was reading back in the 70s a dude in alaska there's like a dormant volcano there he set a bunch of tires on fire at the top of the volcano and convinced like the surrounding people that the volcano was about to erupt that's funny <laughs> that's that's <awesome>. wild <laughs> yeah. that's People's very like, funny cause mad people to evacuate though <laughs> yeah. that's just crazy that's awesome yeah as someone who recently was in a volcano situation that's a funny one. <laughs> As someone who was in a recent volcano situation, that's funny. The it, utmost authority on volcano situations. Arian, did you know that I was quite close to an erupting volcano recently? I did not know this, man. Learn me. Yeah. You know, it, literally, there's no difference between a bunch of burning tires and a volcano that's just smoke billowing because no one will let you get close enough to it to figure it out. Okay, so oh, April wow. Fool's okay. in different cultures. In Germany, an April Fool prank is sometimes later revealed by shouting April, April at the recipient, at the recipient who then becomes the April Fool. <laughs> in Iran, people in media prank on 13 Farvadin, that's the equivalent of 1st April. It's a tradition that takes place 13 days after the Persian New Year. On this day, people go out and leave their houses and have fun, mostly outside in natural parks. Pranks have reportedly been played on this holiday since 536 B.C., that's good. They go outside. I like that. Just go outside and prank each other. In Ireland, it was traditional to entrust the victim with an important letter to give to a named person. That person would read the letter and then ask the victim to take it to somebody else and so on. The letter, when open, contained the words, send the fool further. So it was like a, a chain letter in real life. Uh, let's see. In Italy, France, Belgium, and French-speaking areas, they call it the poisson d'avril. It means the April fish. That's kind of lit. Yeah, I like that. So you try to pin a paper fish on a person's back without being noticed. That's cool. You know what's uh, the best April Fool pranks are the ones that are done weeks in advance that then get revealed on April first. Mm-hmm. Those are the ones that people. That, those are the good ones nowadays. So like, if hypothetically anyone's been like doing something kind of out of the ordinary in the past month, um, April first is like the best day to do the big reveal. I like that. Yeah, if you put work into it ahead of time. Um, in Poland, people try not to actually do any work on April 1st because everybody's going to believe that it's a fake. So it goes back to 1683. Um, Poland, the Polish Anti-Turkish Alliance with Leopold I was signed on April 1st, 1683, and they backdated it to March 31st so that people wouldn't think that it was an April Fool's prank. Love that. Uh, Turkey has a custom and you shout, you shout Bir Nisan, Bir Nisan at people. 
Uh, April Fool's Day in Ukraine is widely celebrated in Odessa, and they have a festival. Uh, you dress up the the main city monument in funny clothes. It's just a good just. You know what? April Fool's Day was a lot of fun until the brands got involved. And then you couldn't trust going online. You couldn't trust anything on April yeah. 1st. I, when was the last good April Fool's Day joke? I don't know. I mean, I thought it was always funny when people would um, take the cream out of Oreos and fill it with toothpaste and then like feed it that to their friends. That may be the worst thing to do. It's <laughs> diabolical. Yeah. But uh, that's like an actual prank. Now it's just people tweeting shit that's dumb. Yeah. It's, it's it's one of my least favorite days gotcha. of the year. Yep. One of the most famous April Fool's Day pranks was perpetrated by the BBC. Back in 1957, the BBC broadcast a film on Panorama showing Swiss farmers picking freshly grown spaghetti. They called it the Swiss Spaghetti Harvest, and the BBC was flooded with requests about the plant. <laughs> That's good. I like that. Like old school shit. In 1980, the BBC decided to do another April Fool's prank on its audiences. This time the broadcaster reported that Big Ben, in order to keep up with the times, was going to be given a digital readout. That's good. The announcement shocked listeners who protested the change. Surprisingly few people thought it was funny. Uh, I like that. A prankstress from Tennessee who claims to be a veteran of, of April Fool's Day went too far. She confessed to her sister that she had killed her husband. Within a few minutes, armed police had surrounded the house in Kingsport looking for the wisecracking homicidal wife. That's a good joke. That sounds like some Kingsport shit. <laughs> That's a good joke. Um, you know, it's not an April Fool's Day joke is trying to open up the door on an airplane while there's hundreds of people on board and then being beaten to a pulp and subdued by a podcaster. But unfortunately, that's what one man had to go through on a flight that he shared with Donnie. Mm. And uh, Donnie is in studio with us right now because there's an update yes. as to the person who <laughs> did this. Yes. Um, like ever since it happened, I've been trying to find some information like who was this guy that tried to open the plane door? Why did he do it? And you can't find a thing. And then this morning, someone tweeted at me and it's body cam footage from the moment our plane landed um, and the police board the plane. And, um, and then it goes until they bring him to the Albuquerque police department and like actually ask him why he did it. And the answer is nutty. So um, are you on the body cam footage? Um, no. Cause this was, I think the body cam footage starts right after everyone had deported the plane and then the police came on, they walk him out. Uh, at first they take him into like a cell in the airport and then they take him into a cruiser to the police department. And that's when two detectives walk in and they try to like figure out why he did it. And um, the, I mean, the answer does not disappoint. It is wacky. So we're going to include the body cam footage in this episode so you can watch it right now. Yeah. So you, you got on the plane, go to Toronto to meet your wife, Will, first name, Will, last name, unknown. Mm -hmm. Unknown phone number. <coughs> you have an address for her in your phone. Yeah. How did she give you that address? Oh, I found it. Found it online on YouTube. She had posted a uh, winter business site. Okay. So you found her address. Did you, did you call her before you were coming out? What did she do? She plans. Like, what kind of planning? All the planning. What does that mean? Like, she is your mother. And I am all father. Huh? What does that mean? That means the father of all. I still have, don't, I'm not following. Everything? Like God? Mm. In your term, yeah, I guess. Like but okay. not really. Sorry. And there's a website with her information? It was on YouTube. Oh, on YouTube? Yeah. <clears throat> Any idea why she would ask you to open the door? Yes. Uh, she wanted me to prove that yeah. I have faith in her. Okay. Mm -hmm. She said that to you, or are you just making that assumption? Uh, that's what I know. Okay. And then, yeah. so, so after, during the interview, they're talking to the guy, and he was going to visit his wife, he said. Yeah, so he says he's going to visit his wife, Lil, and he does not know his wife's last name. He does not know his wife's phone number, um, but he knows the address because he was able to find it on his wife's, like, YouTube page. Okay. So, all right, that's <laughs> already bizarre. Um, and then um, 
then they're like, who is Lil? What does she do? And he goes, she's a planner. She is the mother, the whole mother or something like that. And he goes, and I am the whole father. And the people are like, I'm not really following you here. Like, what does that mean? He, he was like, well, I'm like the father of everything. And they're like, you mean God? And he's like, yeah, I guess in your terms. Mm. So, I mean, I'm thinking like, Wait, what was their response? This... What was their response to that? Cause I mean, <laughs> then they were just like, okay. I mean, I, I'm in there digging uh, it. Well, what are your terms, brother? I, I wanna, <laughs> Cause who yeah. knows? What if he was? This and, guy's, he just sounds like a simp. Yeah, he sounds like a simp. Maybe he was just doing it for pussy, especially because they're like, okay, so you're God and this chick Lil is the mother of all. Um, why did you open the plane door? And he was like, she told me to like, so I could prove my faith to her. Like to, so like I could prove <laughs> that, I'm, that I'm faithful. Yeah, something, you just, something God would do it. I mean, give it a bean. <laughs> yeah, didn't God ask um, which, oh, was it was Abraham, Abraham to kill yeah. his son? Yeah, Joel, his son. we paid to... A Job and a fish for three days. Who was the other dude? No, no, not Job. That was that was Job. Um, Job. 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 Job was, that was Jonah. Job. He he murdered everybody in this nigga life. Give everybody diseases, and he was like, "You can see that faith in me still." He said, "Yes, sir." Crazy. Abraham, I need you to kill your son. His son, Abraham goes to the top of the mountain, takes out the dagger. April Fool. Yeah. <laughs> hey, gotcha, gotcha. You should see the gotcha. look on your son's face. <laughs> uh, you were gonna do it, wasn't you? Yeah. Right, slide dog, come on down. So, so wait, this guy. <laughs> it sounds like if you've seen the the documentary about Mother God, it it gives kind of like that vibe where the dude um, was obsessed with a woman who said that she was the mother of the universe and everything flowed through her, and then the guy wants to become Father God. And she probably doesn't even know this guy exists. Maybe he like donates a bunch of money to her on YouTube or, or like yeah. sends her shit. Yep. Like he's a fanboy. Yep. And in his own mind, he's like, I need to prove my love to her. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to open up the door on this plane. Yeah. And it's wild. Like they asked him, like, do you have a history of mental illness? He said, no. They're like, um, do you take any sort of medication? He said, no. He's like, I'll take ibuprofen at times. Um, and then they're like, have you, have, have you ever been arrested in the past? And like the one thing he said, he was like, one time I tried to stop a guy from drunk driving and then the police detained me. He was like, I saw my neighbor who was drunk in his car and I went and knocked on the window and, huh. then, the, and then the police came by and detained my neighbor and myself. But that was, that was the only thing he shares in the footage. From the sounds of it, cause he said his, his uh, person was a YouTuber, right? Yeah. Yeah. From the sounds of it, probably someone was catfishing him using a YouTuber's likeness photos because there's so much content out there and then proceeded to like probably financially extort him or try to do whatever they could to get money out of him. And then he looked up the YouTuber that he thought he was talking with and then got her address or her business's address. And then, you know, when trying to go actually meet up with her, the the scammer who was definitely t like taking a religious angle on it. Like I am like your dom mother, like, or whatever, uh, was just like, Oh shit, this has gone too far. Let me just get this guy arrested real quick so that I can't actually be held liable for anything he does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the exact quote is like, she wanted me to prove that I had faith in her. So yeah, it could just be she wanted me to get arrested as soon as possible, <laughs> so I wouldn't make it to Toronto. That's yeah, that that'd be a, a two hundred IQ play on her part. I'm trying to I, look up see if I can find this person. Yeah, so it's gotta be tough. It's, it's hard. So I'm looking at a bunch of cults like on Reddit and on YouTube. There's a something called We Are Divine. I wonder if that's what it is. I'm down to do some uh, like being a cult. Like I don't want to do, I want to fall for it. But it was just. Maybe cool to just investigate, check it out. So you, you know, I mean, I'm sure there have been cults in the past that have like done more good than they've done harm. Like sometimes a cult can just be like, if you create a new religion of sorts and it, it can like preach like love and, and happiness and things don't get too weird. It's just What's weird the when they're like, okay, you have to fuck the cult leader or. Yeah. I, I think it becomes a cult when they start stealing your wife. That's sort of mm -hmm. when. 
That's or, when the dudes at least get out. <laughs> yeah, or asking you to commit crimes or drink the Kool-Aid. Yeah, I want to find out who this who this person is. Who's this Lil? Yeah, we should maybe, we should follow up and investigate and try to find out who is catfishing him. You should reach out to him and be like, "Hey, we should do like a true crime, see how many other victims this person has been getting. We could definitely solve it." I mean, in the video, he still seems completely brainwashed like and he still might be he still like i don't think he's like oh shit i got catfished i think he's like don't worry this will all work out like lil knows i'm legit now how do you go about like deprogramming somebody that's that into the lore that he's about to open up a door on a plane slap him slap shit at him just slap him till he's like oh yeah yeah just keep, slap, an just keep slapping him i'm just keep slapping you till you stop doing stupid shit he does like in in the video. It's like a thirty five minute body cam vid. He seems completely calm the whole time, and he's like very polite and he's trying to answer their questions. And he's just like matter of fact, like yeah, I had to open the door to prove. So y'all saying he's in a cult or he's the cult leader? I think Lil yeah. recruited him in. So Lil, Lil either catfished him, brainwashed him, or yeah, just I don't know. I think it was a very complex fin dom that. <laughs> I don't think it's a huge cult apparatus. I think it's definitely just a scam. It's like sadomasochism. Yeah, to like the most extreme degree. Dom. She's like instead of instead of tying a guy up in like a leather outfit and whipping him, she's like get on a plane and open the door. <laughs> yeah, and then you can come. Oh, crash that plane <laughs> for me, baby. No, no, but crash that plane right into my pussy. <laughs> <laughs> financial Wild. financial domination. That was something that uh who who was talking about it but it's it's gone scammers are basically like you know your, your average quote unquote like nigerian prince scam has like been more lucrative and just finding guys who like to be financially dominated and they just pretend to be women and then they financially dominate them by getting the uh the guy to send them tons of money and it's mm. it's one of the most lucrative scams because one you basically get someone to consent to getting dominated uh, financially, which means basically giving you money and you just have to pretend to be some chick or who, or using like some, uh, other person's likeness from the internet, which there are thousands of. So if this guy like did a reverse image Google search and it was like, Oh, this is actually a YouTuber who's financially dominating me. That's yeah, where I think. Yeah. But, yeah. Also there, there's a good chance that this woman has no idea what this guy did and that she's just maybe a YouTuber that has an audience. And this guy got obsessed with her and to a, obviously like a severely, severely unhealthy extent. And then is just thinking about her nonstop and has mental illness and tried to crash a plane on his own. And mm -hmm. she has nothing to do with it. That that's also a possibility. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she definitely has nothing to do with it, but like Our this, old... someone once made a Tinder account of using my photos from the internet and like was tricking people into thinking that, that they were talking to me. So it, this happens all the time. Yeah, yeah, well, totally. That's what happened. Yeah. yeah. No, that is actually what happened. Yeah. <laughs> are we um are we sure this lady exists? Uh we don't have any proof. Um so yeah, we're not sure. So uh, a lady that we're not sure exists asked him to do something on faith. Yep. It's kinda it's a lot uh, of yeah. similarities, I'm just saying. I'm it just doesn't saying. really answer any now, of the questions. No, wait had. here. There's a uh, Canadian YouTuber named Lily Singh. Do you guys know okay. Lily Singh? Nah. Yeah. She has 14.4 million subscribers. And what type of YouTubing does she do? Actress, entertainer, writer, advocate, goofball. Yeah, I think she you had guys... a night show, or she had a late night show for a little bit. And she was canceled. Are yeah. reading far yeah. too much into a guy who said he was God and like trying to explain his actions. Right, but it, there might be something to the fact that he is obsessed with this person that he sees online, and he's convinced himself that he needs to be her husband, and he's a complete psycho. I guess he also just could be insane. But making up, just rant, pulling details out of thin air, like. Lil, I have a P.O. box that he apparently researched, so she didn't give him any of the information. So he just, like, invented a P.O. box but in like, Toronto. If, why not just say the name then? Why say just Lil? Because yeah. maybe it's part of thinks it. Keep the that's probably part of the scam. Like, oh, no, my real friends call me Lil, not Lily. Yeah, it's weird how he goes, she's a planner. When they ask her, like, they're like, what does she do? 
she plans hmm. very ominous i feel like she's like planning the apocalypse or something like oh that. shit that's a good catch i ain't think about it like that she plans she i plans. think it might be this lily singh i think he might just be <laughs> an obsessed fanboy of lily singh and then he just he dragged her into this yeah because she's in toronto she has a massive following she's on youtube her name's lil yeah, yeah, but there's a lot of YouTubers out there. But it's if true. you're if you're trying to like use someone that you have a lot of photos of that you can then exploit, you'd use someone probably from a foreign place, like Canada is foreign, uh, that's far away, and try to like hoping that this person's never actually encountered them outside of your interaction. Yeah. <clears throat> so is like uh police body cam footage is that like all public domain or something like that yes i, I think so, they're yeah. like required to release it yeah. if you if you do like a freedom of information act one time i was uh i was actually caught by fish and wildlife collecting turtles out on long island <laughs> um and i've been looking for the body cam footage but i don't think fish and wildlife wears body cams so i was trying to use freedom of information to get that footage because it's hilarious because basically i'm driving I see this turtle crossing the road, like a bunch of them. So I start picking them up. Um, and then there was a guy beeping behind me. I didn't realize it was fish and wildlife. And then they lit me up and I was, they were like, what are you doing with those turtles? I was like, Oh, I was just making sure they don't get run over. And it's like, Oh yeah, we're trying to do that too. Um, just make sure you put them on the other side of the road. And I was like, Oh, okay. I was just trying to get out of the way. So that I wasn't stopping traffic for too long. But yeah, fish and wildlife, they should wear body cams. They, they would probably capture some crazy shit. Yeah, j yeah, not because like I need to, I need to like monitor or defund the fish and wildlife department, just because I want to see the shit that they deal with on a day to day basis. Yeah, like uh, deers that crash through the front window of people's houses and stuff, or yeah, a raccoon in the attic. Poachers. I would love to see raccoons in the attic. Fish poachers? and wildlife. I, I don't think usually think... you're just dealing with poachers. Wait, does the U.S. have poachers? Or you're thinking about just... animal control. I am thinking about animal control. Yes, animal they're just control trying to protect. Would be cool too, though. There's poachers, like people who like fish. It's mostly people Bats. fishing illegally without oh, okay. a license, uh, overfishing. Like, oh, you got too many yeah, striped yeah, yeah. trout or speckled yeah. salmon. I uh, I almost went out magnet fishing this weekend. I still haven't done it yet. Do you have a magnet? I got a magnet. Yeah. Oh, sick. Yeah. Uh, Kate's boyfriend, Hard Factor Pat, the Beave, he got me a magnet for, I think it was for my birthday. Uh, or no, 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 it was, yeah, one, one of the holidays, probably yeah. maybe Christmas. But uh, I've got this giant magnet, and we're going to go out magnet fishing. And uh, I think Jersey Jerry wants in, too, because nice. he saw a video on, on TikTok of somebody pulling, like, a gun out of the river. Yeah. So I, the thing about magnet fishing, though, is I'm not going to stop until I find my first gun. And then once you find your first gun, I feel like you're in for life. Yeah, if you found a gun, you can might you... find like an old bike. You'll probably find a lot of bikes. Yeah. So, can you um, sell those guns? Absolutely. After not. You no. Furbishing them. You, you have to what turn a question. Them in immediately. You got to call the cops. Yeah. Um, Hank is going to have access to a boat this summer. So like, I feel like if he took you down the river and you could just yeah. like trawl that magnet, you would find some shit. Yeah. My only concern is like, what if it hooks up to like a piece of infrastructure under the water that's made out of metal, like a gas line? Cause they do have some gas no. lines that go underwater. Those I I've gotten my anchor caught on one of those and they're pretty damn held down. A, a you with a magnet isn't going to be able to rip up what a gigantic storm couldn't with current. Probably not, but, but it could do some damage. No. Like some small damage. I don't want to. Okay. Well, Billy says it's fine. I'm going to tell the cop Billy said it was fine. How large of a magnet are we talking? <laughs> it's like uh, probably twice the size of a hockey puck, but it's, okay. but it's strong. Yeah. It's really strong. So I have to like be careful where I put it in my house. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to start doing that. That that would make for some good video. Oh, yeah. For some good, uh, some good TikTok yeah, footage. Yeah. I just searched magnet fishing in Chicago and the YouTube thumbnail is a guy holding up a gun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's gonna be me. Yep, I'm gonna find some guns. I think you have to call the cops no matter what if you find a gun. <laughs> Is it finders keepers? I'm picturing like someone who gets really into magnet fishing, and there's like, and like the wife is like, "Why can't you just fish for fish like a normal guy?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Billy, I think it is finders keepers if you find coins, jewelry, things like that, unless it's a firearm, in which case you have to call the cops. 
but what if the firearm clears all suspected uh, weapons that are in investigations? Can you then keep it? Uh, since that would be very illegal in Chicago, no, I don't think they'd give it back to me. Yeah, yeah. he still doesn't have a license. Well, if you got that one. gun. Yeah, if like you what had... happens? You found a civil. This is actually what's really cool. Well, when sure. does a gun become an antique? So, like, if I found a musket, yeah, would I get to keep that? I don't know. That like, that's pretty cool. Maybe if it's fireable. Let's 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 look into that. I think if it's fireable, then I wouldn't be able to keep it. But yeah, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get heavy into magnet fishing. I can't wait. It looks fun. It does. It looks like a, a great time. Apparently, there's a thriving magnet fishing community here in Chicago. Yeah, there was a guy doing it over at St. Patrick's Day, so he's like in the Green River, just yeah. pulling up random pieces of metal. Yeah, I got like this long ass cord that ties onto the magnet. It's yeah. gonna be, it's gonna rock. It comes with gloves. <laughs> it's a whole kit. It's a whole lifestyle. I mean, do you think magnet fishing could uh, take the place of golf for you? <laughs> probably, probably a, a cheaper habit. Yeah, for sure. You actually make money when you're magnet fishing. That's true. Uh, so yeah, yeah, it's gonna be nice in Chicago. Maybe after after the NCAA tournament, then I'll get out there mm-hmm. and I'll, I'll really start hitting the rivers, hitting the lakes. Be nice. What if I find a body? Uh, he would need to have some metal on it. Like there would need to be metal on the body. I, I saw one video of this guy like wrapped up in chains though. Like it was oh, inside fuck. of a bag, and they tied chains around it, and it sunk to the bottom. That would be. Then I'd have to solve. I'd have to solve the mystery. I'd, ha- I'd have to solve the murder. I get yeah. sucked into it. Anyways, this is going to be a nice hobby yep. that I'm developing. I can't wait for that. Sure. Uh, so yeah, Donnie, um, good luck getting to the bottom of what this guy was up to. I think I think it's worth investigating if he was obsessed with Lily Singh. It yeah. sounds like a good lead. Yeah, like uh, so we talked about on this podcast. I'm going to blog it too. Maybe someone out there who's like reading it or hearing about it will be able to find this Lil character in Toronto. Yeah, yeah. We need to stop her. Well, so, whoever's. Yeah whoever's yeah. doing the bad stuff. Lil Lee Singh probably has done nothing. Yep. Um, but we don't know that. I'm heading to Hong Kong Tuesday night. Late I'm night. Very Hong, jealous. Hong Kong Sevens Part 2. Um, I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to like do a bunch of Molly or not. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> that sounds like he's definitely going to do a I bunch of Molly. <laughs> well, it's like, I don't know. Like, is that... For it's, some reason, when you did a bunch of Molly, like... Erica had no problem with that. She was like, this is a great video. We should share it everywhere. Yeah. But I'm like, I don't know. Like, is me doing a bunch of Molly on camera now? Like, is that going to hurt my chances of finding a sponsor down the line? Like, so is that the only reason you wouldn't do a bunch of Molly? <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty much. I think. And, and the come down. I think that you've reached a point where like, you've been doing this for a while. So it wouldn't be shocking if you did a bunch of Molly overseas oh, now i thought he meant molly you've been doing molly for a while no no i haven't been doing it. I, I i don't think i've done molly since the last hong kong sevens video but if it was somebody else at barstool that was not like a molly guy and went over there and did a bunch of molly i think at this point it'd be see you've already like established yourself like this is this would be a normal thing for your youtube channel to do well that's the thing like people think i'm like the drug guy like i probably i only have probably like three vids on youtube like maybe three where i'm partaking in some sort of drug like the mad honey hong kong sevens beetle nuts in taiwan like guitar guitar yes okay so so four (laughs) i have i have four yeah maybe i'm the drug guy yeah (laughs) yeah but if if it was somebody else like if it was i don't know yeah if if uh like frank the tank went over to hong kong and took a bunch of molly people be like what what is this well we got frank the tank off an edible that's true yeah yep if Frank Nikki smokes did Molly, everybody would just be like, what is this piece of content? But you've you've already established yourself for yeah. years as being a guy who would do something like this. Yes. Um, and I'll say the only reason I have done it in the past is like when there's not a sponsor attached to the video, I, I know that doing something like that like will automatically get the video a lot of views. Yeah. So it's like, okay, if there's not a sponsor, then I at least need to get a lot of views on this video. And then like... I don't know the mad honey video I did in Nepal, which wasn't even like nothing crazy happened except I started puking for like a couple hours. That, Mm -hmm. that vid has like tons of views. It's one of like my most viewed of the past few years, but people just like to watch that type of stuff, but it does not mean I'm a drug guy. I would pay, I would pay thousands of dollars to see big T doing Molly in Hong Kong. Oh, that would be lit. 
Thousands of dollars. It'd have to be millions. Millions. What if it was a hundred thousand? No. You wouldn't no. do it for a hundred grand. Yeah, we're not no. saying you have to do a lot. And this would I mean, be I'm not testing well, life then. endangering drugs overseas. This would be tested Molly that you know it's pure. That Ooh. they actually use for therapeutic purposes these days. I like that. No. That ups the that ups the ante. Is Molly wait? Is Molly Mo uses therapeutic? I thought it was just yeah. Kenny. MDMA. No. Yeah. MDMA, which is Molly, that's it's been like really helpful for PTSD. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Really? Gotta make sure it is Molly. Yeah, that yeah, yeah, that yeah. is the yes. issue. Yeah. Meth. Well, I, yep. I mean honestly, I'm, meth isn't that bad. Uh I'm pretty sure I, that there was some meth in the Molly that was over there in uh, yeah, 2017. Who knows? I think the the wildest thing about that vid is like you you were like, you were like, I don't care if you guys film me actually doing it it's like one thing to film a video and people be like oh this guy seems like he might be on molly like we actually had it on film of us like putting the crystals in our water yeah yeah we did yeah. it was very incriminating um <laughs> yes but i'll be safe um and uh, i'll let you know how it is who are you rooting for in hong kong sevens usa okay yeah I'm that, rooting for the usa that, that would make a lot of sense uh you i think <laughs> usa argentina is awesome have fun watching them. Yeah. They get this one player who's probably the best in the world right now. So USA, Argentina is really good. And then I, I love the Fijians. The Fijians I didn't know South awesome. Americans were played rugby like that. They do. Yeah. Yeah. Argentina, I believe, is in Six Nations. The Pumas. Los Pumas. Las Pumas. Wait, they're in the Six Nations? I believe so. Like, is it the Falklands? Um, let me see. I, I, you know what? I might be. I might. I don't think they're in the Six Nations. I think they're in the. Uh, fuck. What's the name of. The one, it's like uh, the Southern Hemisphere. It's New Zealand, Australia, uh, oh. Argentina, South America. Yeah, I think like, it's called Three Nations, but then they let Argentina in. Yeah, Six Nations is France, England, Wales, yeah. Italy, Scotland, Ireland. Yeah, so it was. It used to be called the Tri Nations, uh, but now it's just called the Rugby Championship, and it's Argentina, Australia, New Zealand, and South Africa. So okay. Argentina is good at rugby, and they're very, very good at rugby seven. So. Uh, my first my first choice would be the USA, but in teams that could probably win it, yeah. I'm gonna say Argentina, Fiji. Cool. I We're, should see if DraftKings is gonna have odds for those games. They do. They do. Yeah. I was betting on the tournament a couple weeks ago, and it's so fun because the games last 14 minutes. Yeah. I think there's a couple minutes for halftime, and then like a minute of warm ups in between games. So uh, it's nonstop action. So you can bet the spread, over unders. Nice. It's fun. I'll have to play some bets before I leave. Yep. DK Wait, partner. The, is that muscle hamster on the spring box? That's not sixes, right? Sevens? Do they play? Yeah, that's not sevens, right? Is he, is he? Does he play for the South African sevens team? I'm not sure who muscle hamster is. He's just this tiny dude who's jacked with super long hair on the spring box. And I just, I watched his TikTok highlights a couple times and I was like, that's pretty cool. Like that's a, that's a guy Doug I'll root with. Martin, Doug Martin. That's what I was trying to figure out who they used to call that. Are Doug there Martin people that play on the both original their, muscle like, hamster full yeah. size rugby team and the sevens team? I think at this level you specialize at this okay. level. You're probably going to be just a sevens player, just a 15s player. Um, but they're probably a couple guys that do both. Okay. But for the Pop most part, the clerk, oh. I think his name is. Okay. Yeah. I'm looking him up right now. Yeah. Uh, you would like this guy PFT. He's literally you. Yeah, playing he's a, rugby. No, he's a scrum half. Yeah. I know this guy. This guy plays, um, he plays 15s or union. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, cool. this dude rocks. Who are some famous dudes on sevens? Like, are there guys who are famous for sevens, but not for union? Yeah, there's a lot. So especially on the U.S. team, Perry Baker, he was on the Eagles for a little bit. His brother, who's his brother? I think his brother is in the NFL. Um, but Perry Baker was the best player in the world. He was on our team and he still is. And he's still very good, but not like the best in the world anymore. Uh, Carlin Isles. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of guys that are just famous for being sevens players. So there was a rugby player recently who got signed to the NFL uh, International Growth Program. Who I think he signed with the Chiefs and his name, he, he's got like yeah. a French sounding last name, but he's it's Welsh. Louis Rezamet. Yeah. Yeah. Rezamet. Yeah. He so he like is. A four, four, one. He is a, uh, a Welsh rugby player and he was on the International pa Pathways thing, but then he just signed with the Chiefs, so he's, like, officially a Chief right now. Mm -hmm. And he's good. He's really young. I think he's, like, 22 years old, and he's one of the best rugby players in the world, uh, but he's never played organized football. So I, I'm always, like, skeptical 
if somebody like that is going to be able to translate because playing football is a much different sport in terms of like how you run. And there's a lot of stuff that he's really good at in rugby that does not translate at all. Like he's great at in rugby. You can, if you're running with the ball, you can drop it and kick it forward and then chase it down. And so if you time your kicks just right and you're fast, you can be really fucking good at that and score a lot of points that way. But obviously you can't do that in the NFL. I think they signed him just to be a designated lateral target for Travis Kelsey. Because huh. Kelsey loves throwing those, which I don't know. Maybe maybe Andy Reid's cooking something up. That oh. might extend Kelsey's career because then he doesn't have to run after the catch. He just catches <laughs> it and makes someone else run for him. Yeah, he doesn't get tackled. He catches it. Yeah. That's Billy again being like Travis Kelsey soft. Yeah. No, no, I'm just saying he's getting older uh, and he <laughs> might want to get someone else to do the dirty work. Yeah, not because get hit. he's he's done his he wants to have some dirty kids work. and settle down. I mean, you know, he's settling down. Yeah, exactly. You know, Taylor might want him, you know, not taking as many hits. Taylor might be like, you have to be at all of my concerts from now on. <laughs> uh, Jordan Mailata on the Eagles was a rugby player, but he's an offensive lineman, I think. So it's a different vibe. Yeah, different vibe. He can still run with the ball if he gets it. They should run some more plays to him because that dude is, he's a handful to take down. He's huge. He's huge. This guy, Zamet, uh, is not, not that. He's going to be no. a running back slash wide receiver. <laughs> wide receiver i don't know like that's that's a whole new skill set just because you're good at catching a pass in rugby is it's completely different from being a receiver in the nfl oh yeah and also the impact part of it something i noticed especially with our ugandan uh with the ugandan guys is that they would rugby tackle which is more of a wrestle in the whole concept between between uh like with the collision is different and then some guys would get it but like where you literally are just so, sort of like using your body as a weapon as opposed to wrestling someone down yeah yeah because yeah, rugby you have to try to wrap up every single time <clears throat> yeah if yeah. you don't it's a it's a penalty so and you always want your head behind the body in rugby or else like their knees can just yeah fuck up your face yeah so but i don't I'm... see him being a good defensive asset well, he's not. He's not going to play defense. But even on special yeah. teams, you think he contributes? Because that pop thing, that like whole concept that you learn sort of in middle school, that like pop as opposed to like wrestle, is like the biggest deep difference between people like continuing to play football and not. Yeah, I, if, you know what? They might use him on the, that new kickoff return. Yeah. Because that's there's going to be opportunities to run trick plays and shit there. Yeah, he might be a weapon when it comes to that. Yeah, because there's a that dude. A lot I think he signed with the uh, with the Niners like four years ago, and he was a pretty good rugby. Um, what I think he was a rugby league player, not a rugby union player. Uh, and they signed him, and they tried to get him on like punt return, kick return, and he wasn't that good at it, but. Uh, I think it was cut within within a year. But this dude is so young and so good that he's got a chance to make the team. Uh, but it's going to be – there's going to be a big learning curve. They're probably – my guess is they'll put him on the practice squad unless you have seven more Chiefs receivers getting arrested this offseason. I mean, uh, if he um, – that just goes to show how different the money is in the NFL because is there any contract that can compete with the one he currently has or is trying to get in the rugby league? I don't know what the uh, the highest paid players get, but you can make you can make pretty good money in Europe playing professional rugby at the top level for sure. But probably not NFL superstar money. Yeah, I would assume you make the most in either South Africa or Australia, just because that's where it's like almost their number one sport. Yeah, Australia, New Zealand, England. <clears throat> yeah, uh, France actually pays pretty well. Yes, for rugby too. They've got a pretty big league over there. Also, handball. The French have the top dollar for handball, which is weird to think about. Yeah, they got like a lot the of best money. players on Paris Saint Germain handball. It says that the most well-paid rugby player is Finn Russell from Scotland, and he makes one point three million a season. Oh, so yeah, geez. bigger payday. Good luck to huh. him. Yeah. All right, well, thank you for joining us, yes. Donnie. Yes, thanks for having me. We're going to get to the bottom of this little yeah, character. Yeah, we're going to find her. Uh, new episode of Last Chance Uganda Wednesday night. Yes. Um, me and Billy coaching a football clinic in like a slum, and it's one of the most chaotic clinics of all time. 
Love yeah. it. I'm, I'm not sure we did a great job. Love it. We, and, we didn't um, know we were going to be doing that. How many more defense. episodes do we have? Uh, three. Okay. It's yep. been awesome. It's been great. All right. Thank you, Donnie. Yeah, no problem. All right. Um, we've put this off for long enough. Big T. Permission to go off granted. Uh, what what would I go off about? <laughs> I don't know. What would you go off about? I mean, like like you're trying to make it some dramatic thing. Like Tennessee had an awesome basketball season and lost to a a, a team that was seated higher than them. They're a good hey, team. Hey, you know I I hear growth, BFT. I don't know about you, but I hear growth from that young man right there. I think I think he just is being very careful with what he says right now. No, I genuinely like. It, th- uh, because I watched the I game. Be with careful, him, I want to be careful how I word this. Actually, I'm not going to say that. Social media and several other factors have like ruined sports for me to the point that I enjoy them more. Okay, That's allow me to explain. A great take. I already allow me to explain. I think take. the 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 social media culture that we are constantly involved in is so ridiculous and toxic that like it has helped me uh care a more healthy amount about like what like i'm sure i i don't check i'm sure people tweeted like vile shit at me yesterday because some 19 year olds like lost a basketball game that Mm -hmm. i that i root for um and so like just not engaging with that has helped me like like Tennessee had the best basketball season in school history this year. It was awesome. It was super fun for four and a half months. And like they almost went to final four. They didn't. That's fine. Like, so I know you're trying to like, no, I, I want to oh, know go off about the refs and like, well, it, you were upset with the refs yesterday. Uh, yeah. Like I wish some things would have happened differently and they didn't. So, okay. It is what it is. I caught okay. some of that shit. That's just a big bitch. That Purdue motherfucker, that motherfucker yeah. just bets. I see no big, like, I don't even, and shout out to Cuz, right? Cause I don't know, buddy. You know what I'm saying? I hope he does well and prospers and all that shit. But like, he's just a big ass dude. Like, I didn't see him being that like skilled. You know what I'm saying? So like, I really think Tennessee was actually a better team, like ball wise, but that's just a big bitch, dog. It is what it is. He got <laughs> foul trouble earlier. That, that motherfucker. If, big, uh, uh, my biggest problem was not the fouls called uh, against Tennessee on him. It was the fouls not called against him. Mm-hmm. Like he, he, clears guys out with his elbows to the face and like, but that's the way he's been officiated all season. And he'll continue to, uh, to be called that way. The next two games that they play. And he he He, has, he's like a big man who's going to get beat up by a real, like an, like an angry, like D I want to see DJ burns on him. Like just like uh, when Zion was playing taco fall and he just bullied him. Like here's the thing though. He's better better than taco fall. Here's the thing of Billy is also, um, DJ Burns does not really play defense. I think you'll get up for a big game. He'll definitely, yeah, he'll definitely play harder. But if you've watched DJ Burns at all, he's not, he's not like a world beater on defense. I think he, I think he puts in, he'll put the work in. It's a big on big matchup. Like that's, that's like, that's like King Kong versus Godzilla. Like it is going to be, you get up for that. It is going to be fun to watch for sure. And I'm excited about it. I'm going to be rooting for DJ Burns because he's, like the most fun player ever to root for when he's like dropping spin moves on you, like little underhanded finger rolls, the incredible touch that he has for a big dude. He's awesome. He's great. But I don't think that DJ Burns is going to get like three fouls called in the first two minutes. Him beating up on Duke also just like Duke's late stage Roman empire. They're falling. The barbarians at the gates just bust them up. That that's dope. I don't know if they're falling. I mean, they almost made a Final Four. No, well, with play, Coach K wouldn't have put up with that. Hang on, hang on. You can't say they. I mean, they almost did make a Final Four in quotation marks. They played a. They were four, so they played a thirteen. Then they played a twelve. A great twelve, maybe the best twelve. Then a one seed who lost their best player in the first ten minutes of the game. That without them, they're like a six seed. I think it's it was closer to halftime, but your point stands. And Jamal then, Shad is a is an amazing player. And then they played an eleven and lost. Yeah. So, like, yeah. almost made a Final Four is quite a... But they're also reloading. They're getting Cooper Flag next year. Next year is the year that we'll find out if they're still Duke or not. Okay. I like that take. I mean, it's true. They have the... I believe their class is number one. 
Yeah. So them and Rutgers, I think, are neck and neck. Rutgers has two five stars. That's awesome. That's I awesome. Just, I just – someone made a TikTok, which was the Duke players making a TikTok in the locker room after the game. And then it just was DJ Burns walking out with the boom box cut too. And it was just like, I was like, okay, yeah. Beast, yeah, beast D- mode still wins. DJ Burns is a monster. I, I love watching him play. He's so skilled for a big man. I just don't know that he's going to be able to to stop Zach Eady or come close to stopping him. Um, he just won't get bullied. Yeah, I wouldn't like, count on it. That's what I'm saying. He will get bullied. We'll see. That's, he's that's six a nine. Big, that's a big bitch, dog. I don't <laughs> think he allows himself to get bullied. It's one of those things. But see, th- when you play big sloppy motherfuckers like that, like that's this when the ref always like you can't touch him. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't you can't get up underneath him in it. So that's why teams always get in foul trouble when you play big motherfuckers like that. Just the nature of the, of the sport. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's tough. Very tough to defend him. Uh, but. I'm sorry, Big T, because I know the season meant a lot to you. It would have been nice if Zakai Ziegler had made a three, or uh, if he and Jonas Adu had made like two of their twelve free throw line jumpers. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's probably where the the game was decided was those two. But happens. But you know what? You're going to be awesome at football next year. We could be pretty good at football. You got a great quarterback. We do. Great coach. Yep. Great fan base. Always. Tennessee's on the up. They were they were lined up shoulder to shoulder at 9 p.m. last night at the, the practice facility when the buses got back. The football team was? No, the fans. Oh, the fans were, yeah. That would like, be weird. Packed in shit. there. <laughs> huh? the football team lined yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, that would be, the I mean, be weird as shit. <laughs> <laughs> to salute them. <laughs> yeah, it's like the uh, those bikers that show up, the guardian angels or whatever that show up uh, at funerals. To like I'm, to, I'm to, to block out I the don't. Westboro Baptist Church protesters. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of lit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you get the football team there, shoulder to shoulder, just protecting the basketball team. Yeah, These they they had a hell of a year. They did, they did. I was rooting for them. It was t- very tough watch yesterday. Um, tough to lose like that, and very frustrating. It's a frustrating way to. to it go was out. frustrating. Yeah, but so you are you reached the point where the losses you have more of a perspective. I mean, it was like uh, they were really awesome and they played another good team and they lost. Yeah. And right. people still do like, you know, Tennessee in the tournament, Rick, but they went to the Elite Eight, which had only happened one other time in the history of the school. And they are, I think, undisputably, one. Of, uh, I think they are clearly one of the four best teams in the country. They just happened to, like, if they had gotten the draw that Alabama had or nc state or duke or whoever they would probably be in the final four but they didn't so they're not i, I agree with that take. yep yep this is very um it's like Giannis. remember when the bucks got bounced for the playoffs and they're like yeah yeah he was absolutely correct and got like clowned for that he said you know we didn't win a championship but to write this whole year off as a failure i dispute that i also think it's different in professional sports but he was still right mm-hmm. Giannis at the team co at the t co is that what we're saying you're still pretending to is, – is this a bit of yours to pretend not to know how to pronounce his name? No, I'm trying to figure out how to put, like, big T into Giannis's name. Oh, I see. I see. Giannis Atatiko. Big T Tacumpo. Big. T- I like that. Giannis Big T Tacumpo. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, good for you, Big T. I'm happy for you. I'm I mean, happy. Uh, you, you don't need to be happy for me. They still lost. No, I'm happy. I'm happy that you have this good perspective. Y- yeah, I, I, I guess. Big T gave a lot of people waiting to hear Tennessee rant blue balls. Yeah. Big dub. That's their problem, not mine. Big blue balls. I've never had that, though. <laughs> Have you ever cared enough about a team, Arian, where you No, I'm talking about you blue get balls. so upset? Oh, you've never had blue balls. <laughs> <laughs> I I did. I've had it once. Is it is it like cause I I mean I've I've been in the act of and then didn't like yeah. And then something happened and we had this or whatever the case would be. But yep. I've never they these people saying they get swollen and all this stuff. Like, I've never had this shit before. Yeah. I, I had it one time. Uh, I don't think they got swollen, but they hurt real bad. For like I hours. I thought motherfuckers was joking. Like I I I, I guess it's I don't know, different than that. Gifty, different, that that might different, be something different bacterial. Strokes, different fo- whoa. No, that's what that's what blue balls is, Billy. Your balls I don't think they actually turn blue. 
but they it it yeah. hurts. It got painful. I think I think it's something definitely that's more not as physical as people want to claim it, but more just people who are butt hurt about situations. So I I used man, to think man, it's a butt hurt. I used to think that way, Billy, until I actually got it. I always thought it was just a guy being like, "Oh, come on, babe, you're going to give me blue balls." Like, what the fuck? Like making her feel bad. That's a little rapey. That was a little rapey. Yeah, I always thought that's what it was when guys make would me, say that. Make me ejaculate or I am affected. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, until wild, you no. it, until you have it one time, and it's actually a physical pain. So why don't you just rub, you rub one out and then you can handle that yourself? Well, I couldn't rub it out at the time. It was uh, it's a, it's a long story, but I wasn't in a place where I could just like duck into a different room and jack off. L- lucky for you, we have a podcast. What do you mean? You could Please tell the story. Tell us the story. Okay, I could tell the story. Okay, so one time I was having <laughs> sex. Okay. <laughs> so there I was. Congrats. I never thought this would happen to me. Congrats on the sex, Eric. I had oh, sex. Man. And then it got stopped because we were interrupted by people being in the house that we didn't think were going to be in the house. And then we had to stop having sex. And then I couldn't come. And then my balls started to hurt. So why didn't you go in like the bathroom? We Wait, had to. Did they did they walk in the room? Why you, you could have just like soft stroked it. They did not. They did not walk in the room, but we had to go out and be with the people that were in that had come into that house. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> yeah, and it, I couldn't like just. I don't know. If, it would feel weird running to the bathroom like you're in company, and you're like, "Hey, I got to go to the bathroom real quick and jack off." I would feel weird about just going to the bathroom and jacking off. That would be a little weird, but I mean, but also, but also at the time, I didn't know really what was going on. Like, I didn't know in my head, I was young. I wasn't like, oh, the I have the perfect cure for what I'm dealing with right now. It's to just go jack off. That's true. I didn't know that that would fix things. And I don't know if it does fix things, actually. Once you get the blue ball pain, yeah, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe it's just you have to you have to wait for the pain to go away. Wait, can I ask something? Yep. Can't you like not walk when you're in that kind of situation? Oh, if you have a boner? Yeah. Uh, no, so your boner goes away, Mad Dog. Good question. There might be some people out there that are, that are curious. When you have blue balls, you don't have a boner the entire time. So Wait, if you don't have, wait, if you have blue balls, you don't have a boner? No. Well, I want to go back. You're saying, are you agreeing with her that you can't walk with a boner? Oh, no, I'm not. No, I, th- I think she's saying like you, you can't walk around with a boner and then oh, people well, would notice that you had a boner. Is that oh, what wait, you're saying? Can't you not walk around though? No, you can Are walk Are you saying it's physically impossible to walk? No, I know it's possible, but doesn't it like hurt? No. No, it's oh. in fact it's funny. <laughs> if you walk around with a boner. Yeah, it is funny. Oh. <laughs> it's funny. No, you can you can walk with a boner. Um uh, <laughs> also thought it was, like, I, the whole I, uh, thing was like no. Can uh, you walk you, with blue balls? Uh yeah, it just hurts. Right. That's you're, you're okay. just always you're always hurting. How, do you think anybody's <laughs> ever run like a mile, a full mile with a boner? No, because of the blood circulation to your legs. That's why you're supposed to clench your like quads and other muscles in your lower body. Clench your quads. Get... Wait, every time you you get a boner, you have to like clench your leg muscles. <sighs> um, we really don't need this clip on here. <laughs> what are you talking no, about? We no, just... no. If you in order to redirect blood flow to your muscles from other organs, if you like flex, blood goes to those places. And if there's other areas of the body that currently have all that blood, then you can redirect them by flexing close to them and then the blood leaves. It's the classic situation before you get up and give a presentation in class and you have the fear erection. Yeah. So you do the waistband talk. Wait, you get fear boners? I do not, Maddie. (laughs) Anyone? No, like when you're nervous and you're about to present during class. This is a common phenomenon. What? Oh, Uh, shit. And you get a boner? I I certainly don't think it is. This is a a phenomenon. You you get horny for public speaking, bro? (laughs) So what what Billy's talking about, (laughs) I think think most guys have have dealt with a situation where, like you're in middle school, and you just have a boner because you're 14 years old, and you get surprise boners all the time. And you're like, oh, shit, I have a, a boner I didn't think was coming. I hope that the teacher doesn't pick me to come up right, to the front exactly. of the class or stand up. 
Um, but, but you don't have the boner because yeah. you're scared. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Not necessarily. No, but that is what Billy is saying. That's what Billy was Billy's saying. saying that, no, that's not what I'm saying. That like an animal that like swells up part of its its throat to make it look more intimidating <laughs> when it's scared. Billy's fight or flight reflex is to just get a boner. That's what Billy said. Uh, right? That's I, not what I, I said. It is. It yeah, is. No, that is exactly what you said. That That's not what I say. You're gaslighting us now, um, Billy. No, no, no. Okay. I said like, I said... You, when you're nervous, sometimes you're you. I think it's more that it's a chicken or the egg thing where you start to get nervous once you get the boner. No, but you said that you get <laughs> a boner when you're nervous. Like, I hope teacher doesn't pick on me. Oh, I'm, wait, I'm getting a boner now because <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> and I have to clench my quads. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a trick? Do y'all got a trick? Like, if you are, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got that going on and you trying to make it go down, you got a trick? Waistband yeah, yeah. talk. Clench your, flex your muscles. <laughs> okay, that's yours. What about y'all too? Yeah, I, think I feel it, like every man innately knows the, the tuck. Yeah, you do the tuck. Tuck in oh, the waistband. But you don't got like nothing that you could just like. So I got something I can think about that just makes it instantly go. That's I don't know why. Oh no, didn't. that's crazy. Oh, share with the class. <laughs> yeah, uh, lamps. I just start thinking of a bunch of lamps. Like, it don't matter what, <laughs> what kind of lamps. And that shit just goes away. I don't know. <laughs> it's been like that since I was a kid. I don't know what it is. I, and, and I just think of like mad lamps, bro. Like the ones that hang over, <laughs> ones that sit down. I even once tested myself. I was like, all right, what if you got like a Betty Boop lamp? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Doesn't matter. Any the, kind of lamp. The leg lamp from <laughs> Christmas Story? <laughs> Any lamp, dog. Oh, if there's a lamp on there? If mm. it's a lamp, my my little man, like he don't fuck the lamps. There's a lamp in the room with you. Yeah. Is that Anchorman lamp where he's just going lamp? Yeah, I love lamp. Uh, I love lamp. The room. So, and, so Aaron, wait. Yeah, that's a good question, Mackenzie. If there's a lamp in the room with you and you're having sex, yeah. do you have a hard time keeping a boner because <laughs> you're like, oh fuck, there's a lamp right there? <laughs> no, nah, I never. I've never thought about lamps in the act of having sex. It's when I, I'm just, you know, say I got that situation going on and I don't want it to be there. I'll just mad think about lamps. And it goes away. <laughs> so <specific. laughs> are, are the lamps? Are they illuminated? It don't matter any kind of lamps, and I just I just think like think think like thrift store vibes, and there's just like a row of a whole bunch of different type of lamps, old, new, big, small, just mad lamps, and that shit it does the trick for me. I don't know why. That's fascinating. I, I want to know why that works for you. Mm -hmm. Maybe is it the act of just focusing on something? That could be it. That could be it. And lamps was just my go-to as a kid for some reason. I don't know, but yeah, man, lamps, lamps. No, I don't. I don't. I, sometimes I think about baseball. That's a little <laughs> sus. <laughs> no, you baseball think about is ba a classic one. Yeah, you think about stats. I think about baseball stats. Just numbers. You just punch your numbers and your shit goes away. Like, what, what was Greg Maddox's ERA in 1996? <laughs> if uh, I think about, I'm gonna guess. Okay. I'm gonna say 289. I'm softer right now than I've ever been in my life. <laughs> Oh please! I, I, I think say, it might be lower than I'm that. Say, I think I'm gonna say, say 270. 193. That might that might have been one wow. of his best years. 96, 272. I even, okay, you're, I don't even good, know what ERA is. I ain't gonna front. Uh, Aaron, did you say 270? Yeah, it's 272. <laughs> Holy shit! I don't even know what an ERA is. What is that? You know ball. Uh, <laughs> that is earned run average. That is the amount of runs a pitcher gives up uh, times their number of innings pitched divided by nine. Fucking or wait, 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 wait. Is no, that... it, it's meant to calculate like if you no, pitch No, divided nine... by number of innings pitched times nine. Excuse me. It, it's meant to calculate if this pitcher pitched nine innings, how many earned runs would he give up based on what he's done before? For instance, if you I pitch was... three innings and give up one run, you take the one run uh, times... It'd be times the, three. The three innings, which is three times... Wait, wait, wait. No, no, you take... No, 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 no. I, I'm fucking this up. You take the one run divided by the three innings, which is 0.3. You multiply that by nine Yep. to get 270. Yep. I'm definitely not going to remember any of this, but I appreciate you guys wholeheartedly explaining oh. it to me. Wait, 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 wait. I think it'd be three. Three. I think it'd be three. Because it's 0.33, not 0 0.3. I'm all over the place with this math. I do know how to calculate it. Yeah. If you give up one run in an in inning, one earned run, your ERA would be nine. Your ERA would be nine because this then... is how this is how women feel when you explain sports to them. Like sometimes you know women like <laughs> when you like the husband is explaining sports, but she's like, "What the fuck are you talking?" This is how I, I get it. 
No, Aaron, I'm I'm gonna explain to you in a way that makes no, no, total no. sense. I just say I, I genuinely appreciate you guys explaining okay. this to me because like it's you know you love me enough to you know want to do that. I'm just yeah. not gonna remember this shit. I promise. Yeah, and guess what? You're not horny right now. That's true. Because we're talking ERA, we're talking baseball stats. We're talking baseball stats. We're talking now, when I think about stuff. football, I get a I get a big boner. It has a complete opposite effect on me. <laughs> How many forced uh, no. fumbles did Sean Taylor have in 2006? Okay, let's do that. I'm going to go with... I'm going to bone her. I think, I think it was I four, seven. Big T. I got seven. I got seven. I think he had four. And I'm... Sean, you said 2006? Yeah, I'm so horny right now. I think about football. <laughs> Internet in here sucks. Hang on. I love that two, for a podcast. 2006, he had three forced fumbles. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. That's a so, fun yeah. game. That's, uh, so, Lamps... <laughs> yeah, Lamps does it, man. It's a good I'm gonna try that next time I get a surprise boner. <laughs> yeah, just, just like just think of lamps, all kinds of different type colors, variants, like little, you know, the the basic one. You got that basic one where it's like you know got a base and it got some little like let's say pearl oval shaped kind of thing, mm -hmm. and then it goes into a little thing and then it has a little cover. Nice looking lamps. I'm gonna be honest, lamps are probably they're pretty like the ratio, right? They they got curves, dude. Like they're actually one of the things that actually. Kind you, of, want, you want to fuck a lamp, Billy? I'm just saying that there's there's some lamps that look like they have some great a great figure. Right, I'm so just I saying don't, lamps. I don't, I don't make the rules in my brain, bro. I just think about lamps and it goes away. I'm, I'm not... thinking about a porcelain lamp. Mm. Now, <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. Yeah. What about so if we're talking IKEA lamps, like those things suck. All oh, good. I'm telling you, if it's if it's if it's emitting light. You got to plug it in, <laughs> make it my about, shit go away. <laughs> what about oh a gas gosh. burning? A what? A gas burning lamp, like an old school lamp. Oh, yeah, that'll work too. What you about, know what? I'm going to think oh, about that one next time. What about a woman with a lamp shade on her head? That's what I thought. So I was like, maybe maybe it's just like, you know what I mean? Like, I tried, thought about Betty Boop. I don't know if y'all know who Betty Boop is. Betty mm -hmm. Boop is like the quintessential, like, right. cute little cartoon figure or whatever. So I thought of Betty Boop lamp. Still made it go down. So all good. What about a real human woman with a lampshade as a hat? It's a real human <laughs> woman. <laughs> I don't know. I would. I, I'll, I'll. I'll test that hypothesis next time it happens. Perfect. What about um, a lava lamp? <laughs> I've never had that one in the fold, but I'm sure that'll that'll do the trick as well. I'll, I'll. I'll think about it. The worst part about getting older is I. I very very rarely get surprise boners anymore. You should get uh, that checked the mornings, out. The no, mornings. Billy, well, you, that's the second time you've told me to get something checked out. That is out true, though. ED is <laughs> yeah. a blood flow. So it's a circulation problem. So it could be like early warning signs of like some kind of like artery, like clogage or something like that. It could be. I'm just saying. Get I get boners. Get levels checked, bro. <laughs> I get boners. I get key boners levels. at all the right times. What, what, what I'm it saying? It might be. So have like, you ever head when trauma? I, when I first, to when I first went one? vegan. <laughs> <laughs> he had blue balls. He told you when when I first went when I first went vegan, and I was having conversations with all these doctors, and they were saying like some of the effects of like eating lots of meat. That's one of them. One of them is like ED because it has like I don't know. I'm not a doctor, but like it doesn't regulate blood flow as well or whatever the case may be. But uh, when you eat a pure uh, vegan diet, but it's like all veggies, like raw veggies, really good veggies. It just like cleans everything out and your erections go through the roof. Like surprise ones. You're just, yeah, you're more, uh, I don't know how to, what's the terminology? You stand Libido, attention. higher libido. You, you, I, don't know, I don't know if it increases your sex drive, but it increases your blood flow to that place. Yeah, Billy, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about like I can't get a boner. I'm saying that like. I, I I very rarely will just be sitting and then the boner's back. Oh shit! What is this? Uh, like look, when, when you're younger. I'm just saying, the first sign of having a pituitary problem, either old age or maybe even TBI, like or like brain injury, is that that stops. I actually learned that from Julian Edelman. I can get a boner, Billy. Well, I you you were the one complaining about your boners. I was just like saying, hey, get I'm that just checked saying, out. Like I, the the surprise one. The one that we're talking about. You're just sitting down. Oh, boner. What about in the mornings? Is, is it, yeah. You still, you still chilling in the morning? That's the most I, important one. I get morning. Yeah. I, yes, I have morning wood, Arian. Uh, why, why, why are you getting all, getting all 
Yeah, they're getting agitated. Relaxed, we dude. just have it's just, it's just two two it's grown just, men talking about uh, sexual health. Well, man. we have it's McKinsey okay. and Madeline in the other room, and they don't want to be listening to all these all these, these facts are, about these us. Are, these are these, these are mature yeah, seven women that listen to the show. Yeah. 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 Don't forget it's about them. it's male health, dude. Just dudes talking yeah. about yeah. it. Yeah, I'm a it's, proponent of male. Healthy is it equipment. early? It's an early sign of uh low, like the the way your blood flows. It's an early yeah. sign. It's a real thing. So I was just checking on my man's. You don't got to get all weird, bro. I don't care how much you stroking, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> I have high cholesterol. Recently found that out. I'm sorry, Billy. What is that? Yeah, the <laughs> HDL or the LDL. Male uh, Billy gonna put himself in the combo. Bro. Go ahead, Billy. No, what's up no, with your, I'm just saying, high, like I'm, he's like. You're right. You're right. Yeah. What, what's up with your high cholesterol, brother? Let's no, no, I, it's just it's just high. But like you know, <laughs> okay, cool. I need to lower it. Do you guys? What yeah. kind of diet do you guys use? Have you guys ever had a cholesterol problem? Billy, I never do you think had. It might have something to do with like all the all the supplements that you inject into your body. Right now, I want you to list all the shit that's not natural that you take. Okay, give me, give me everything. Okay, we'll do that right now. Uh. Vitamin D, 10,000 I use. Okay. Uh, we're going male multivitamin, but that's just uh, the on nutrition male multivitamin. Uh, we're doing L-theanine every morning, lion's mane, uh, L-carnitine, um, creatine, of course. Uh, then I take a beef liver supplement. And then um, what else? What else? Then like a pre-workout before I work out, and that's got all sorts of stuff. Beta alanine is probably the best pre-workout supplement. Um, and then we are also going with NAC before bed. Oh, uh, magnesium glycinate. That is a killer. If you have if you have a hard time sleeping, take some magnesium glycinate. Uh, it will literally knock you out. It's like a drug, but it's healthy. Uh, and then I sometimes go with some glutamine. After like that, your spleen going bust or some shit, bro. Why do you take all that shit, man? Like, For to optimize, just like to feel good. Does it work? Do you feel yeah, good? It makes you feel good. It makes me feel good. Okay. Yeah. I hope it's working, man. That's a lot of shit, though. Uh, you know, we, but like our diets nowadays, we're missing a lot of stuff. Like, it, be it like the probiotics that get killed by pesticides, or like who knows? Billy, yeah, take, I hope, I hope it have works, some man. oatmeal. Eat oatmeal. That helps. I, I think I need more fiber in my diet. Yeah, oatmeal. Whole oats. So, you know, we're, we're, we're not shaming anybody for being in bad health. I'm in great health right now. My boner's never been stronger. <laughs> Doesn't sound like it. Uh, Happy for you, man. Thank you. Appreciate that, Aaron. And the ones that benefit from that. Yeah, yeah. No, it's everyone's, everyone, we all eat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so um breaking news right now a human got bird flu oh, oh shit fuck. oh fuck yeah human has bird flu oh, where texas oh, 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 why? Shit. i was just curious if this was is this an april from, fool's joke no from washington or atlanta or somewhere like that <laughs> atlanta what would you say atlanta big t uh, How would you say Atlanta? It's where, it's where a business is headquartered that might have some interest. In a mm-hmm. business, mm-hmm. Chick Fil A. No, maybe no. A I mean, that, that'd a probably be probably be bad for Chick Fil A. <laughs> yeah, it's a center. Right. Is it a center, Big T? It, it Not could a company? be. A, it could be a center. Yeah. Oh. No, it was in Texas, and uh, there was a rancher that was. He was a, I think, a dairy cattle rancher, and um, he caught bird flu, and he only had eye inflammation. They got tested. And the CDC checked him out, and he's probably going to recover. He should be fine. It's the second case in the United States ever of avian flu being transmitted to a person. The first one was in Colorado, where that person uh, had flu-like symptoms and then recovered in a couple days. So uh, the big concern, it looks like, is that the virus has changed. So uh, it's transmitting from cattle to cattle now. Whereas before it was just bird to bird. So now cows are getting it. And now it's jumped from cows to humans. Now are the cattle dying? I don't know. So the virus was detected in dairy herds in Texas and Kansas last week. And it spread to additional herds in at least five states. 
which is evidence that it's spreading cow to cow. It's been confirmed in Michigan, Idaho, New Mexico. And yeah, people are, people are worried. People are worried. The birds, you remember, um, the, uh, the owner of the Timberwolves when they did all those protests against them in the playoffs, people yeah. were like gluing their hands to the court is because I think he killed 4 million chickens. He was a chick. He's a chicken owner or like a poultry meat processing plant owner. And they had avian flu and he had to exterminate all of his birds. Oh yeah. You got to do that. Yeah. I was talking to my, um, my stepdad and he, that's what he did. He developed, um, there was a, a strain of chickens. I don't, maybe I said this before, but, uh, for a Tyson chicken that the Tyson chicken company, he developed like one of the first strains for that company. So he had like residuals. He was getting paid for a long time for that shit. But he was talking about that. He said, uh, anytime like one of them get infected, you gotta, you gotta off the whole shit. How do you mm -hmm. kill 4 million chickens? That's a good question. You eat them? Nah, you no. Know. That's They're where infected. They them. I know, but like, you know, the, I don't think the, the flu is going to be in the meat, you know? I think that's exactly what the flu would be. Okay. I mean, that's literally kill... why you have to kill them. No, but if you kill them, then they're dead, and then the virus probably dies, and then when you cook them, the meat's probably fine. I don't know enough about it. Do okay, you have to kill them and destroy them? Here we go. One of the preferred methods is to spray water-based firefighting foam over birds as they roam around the ground inside of a barn. The foam Dang. kills the animals by cutting off their air supply. Yeah, oh, that's crazy. That's so wow, cuz. Oh my god. <laughs> it makes sense. Mad when inhumane, dog. When wow. foam won't work, the USDA recommends sealing up barns and piping carbon dioxide inside. <laughs> also, Billy's right. Avian flu is not a foodborne illness, which means you cannot contract it from eating poultry that has been cooked properly. Yeah, so like why are they and just And that's from the National Chicken Council. Yeah. So hypothetically, why don't they just process the chickens how they normally do and sell them, and or maybe uh, donate I think, them? I think he explained it to me one time. I could be wrong, but I think it's because, like, when it spreads, like it kills them, correct? So like, if if you if you don't kill them off, it's gonna they're just gonna continue to pass it to each other. I think yeah. that's correct. It's to help stamp out the diseases spread. All of the chickens, turkeys, whatever raised on affected farms have been killed and disposed of whether or not they actually had the virus which can spread rapidly and has a very high mortality rate for poultry birds Damn, that's so if you up. don't get rid of the birds it'll just kill more yes yeah. yeah wasn't and there I, I, one outbreak where it was killing deer and like birds were dropping out of the sky and migratory birds were doing really badly but like it was killing deer and it didn't jump to humans but like everything was dying just across the countryside might be, but if my guess is that if you have a, a big chicken farm and you need to exterminate all of them at the same time, so the new chickens that are being raised don't also get it, you probably could sell some of the meat, but I don't know that they have the the infrastructure to harvest like two million chickens at a time in a timely manner and get them packaged, processed, and delivered before the meat starts to expire. Oh boy. Okay, guys, globally, since 2003, there have been 868 cases of human infection with H5N1, of which 457 were fatal, a 53% case fatality rate. That's not good. So in my optimistic reasoning and trying to get sleep tonight, I'm going to say that whatever this strain is uh, that has been killing the cattle is less fatal. Um, but more transmissible, and uh, this guy seems to be fine, right? So far. So, uh, hmm. hopefully that's the case. Yeah, and again, if there was a virus that came out right now that actually did have a 50% 50 50 mortality rate, we'd be so fucked. Yeah, but usually those aren't as transmissible. Yeah. But... Like Ebola. If Ebola happened in the United States, actually, no, that's probably a bad example. I still think Ebola is pretty easy if, to contain. If there's an Ebola breakout in the United States, I think that people are familiar enough with Ebola and the symptoms of it are so grisly and so gnarly that people would take precaution. But if it was like a respiratory flu that was, if it was like a new COVID that was, uh, that was 50% mortality rate people would we would not we would not do well at containing that oh the next disease we're gonna all die we would not do well at it's, all. it's gonna be a shit show 
Yeah. We've All left. Right, so... this, we've left. We've left the that the, the 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 latest pandemic, and I had heard conversations I've never even thought was a thing. People don't think viruses exist, so I'm like, you, know, shit, you left a worldwide pandemic thinking that viruses don't exist, man. I'm fucking. We're dead. Yeah. Um. In other health news, the Havana syndrome is back. Yes. So, um, they they did an investigation. It was uh, a five year investigation into Havana syndrome on sixty minutes, and we we actually had an episode on this a couple of years ago with Felix from Chapo, and we yep. talked about Havana syndrome, where it sounded like a lot of people had uh, they convinced themselves that they were getting sick, like people in the State Department, people in the CIA, and there was never any any evidence that um, it actually existed, but a lot of people that served overseas were complaining about headaches, complaining about like uh, just all sorts of central nervous system reactions to a mystery ailment. And people blamed it on uh, the Russians. They blamed it on spies from other countries that had invented new technology, new weapons to make people feel sick without uh, any like outward sign of what's causing the illness. So 60 Minutes did a five year investigation into it. And they say that there's new evidence. I looked through some of the evidence. Did you, Billy? Yes. So um, a lot of it centers around the fact that people that work in the GRU, which is that's like the uh, the the Russian equivalent of uh, the CIA, like the KGB is the G GRU now. Um, a lot of people that have connections to the GRU were spending time in cities where these conditions were subsequently reported by American people. So from a lot of the stuff, basically there was a lot of officials and family members who lived with them that uh, said that they were hearing weird stuff in their homes, strange sounds. And then all of them suffered from mysterious injuries afterwards with symptoms like headaches, nausea, memory problems, and difficulty balancing. So it was something they found that a lot of these individuals who were affected were, it wasn't they were all really good agents and a lot of them specifically had great success in uh, their work against Russia. And they started to realize that none of the bad agents or mid-level agents or agents who were new to the force, they were all se not seasoned veterans, but all highly successful agents who had just recently accomplished something in uh, intelligence against Russians. Um, with that, like they sort of couldn't deny that this was direct retribution from Russians. Um, hypothetically though, if you were an outstanding CIA agent, I would imagine that your job entails a fuckload of stress. Right. And that's and when you're probably realized, a workaholic, right? No, but that's when they, that's what they ruled out when they realized that it was their family members as well. Mm -hmm. And basically somehow someone had put traumatic brain injury like these guys were not having traumatic, they, they were going through stress and stuff, but they didn't have a serious traumatic event to cause a traumatic brain injury. And they were seeing it in the CAT scans. Interesting. So this is an investigation done by 60 minutes. So it's not a scientific study that's been done. It's uh, a piece of journalism by, by CBS. So it's, I don't think it's like settled yet. We don't know. Yeah. They described the sound that they were hearing as a marble circling down a metal funnel. Uh, he said he heard the sound four times, always in the same spot and at the same time of day, right above his son's crib when he put him to bed at night. He said the sound was nothing like he'd ever heard before and fairly loud. Shortly after hearing the sounds, he and his wife began to feel ill. He suffered through migraines, dizziness, and memory issues. Uh, and a big concern was no one believed him. I'm going to be I like I've been writing blogging about this for years and I know last time we were like oh they're absolutely full of shit but if people people full of shit don't like keep like ruin their lives and their reputations and the job that they're in just for for absolutely no reason like these were high value assets to the United States like they aren't you know why would they ruin their whole lives claiming they had a a problem if it didn't exist. Yeah. I mean, I, I know what you're saying, but there's still, a, there's a possibility that they were experiencing these symptoms, but it didn't have anything to do with 
like a, a radar gun being fired at him or a microwave gun. I'm just like, think about the technology we have nowadays. We have AI, like we're supposed to hit some singularity in 2048, yeah. which is supposed to be when I, I don't even, I can't even comprehend what exactly is going going to go on, but they're saying that we're going to get to a million times the computational uh, efficiency of humans and we're going to be able to just like never work again apparently that's what i took from it but uh uh like we definitely have technology to do stuff that we never imagined so it is not crazy to think that through some sort of ray or device i mean if you put someone's head in a microwave they probably would die right so it, it would yeah, be I think that, that's safe to say <laughs> i <laughs> That's like, it's not that crazy to think that they wouldn't be able to direct some sort of crazy. But what's the evidence though? Like you make ev- a, you're making a jump from this is a thing or, or something happened and this is a thing and you have nothing to connect it to. Well, the how many times it's occurred and how many uh, corroborating statements there. there, but, have no, there but, there's, but again, there's no evidence to connect it to. I'm not saying it right. could or couldn't, but what I'm saying is that's not, I don't think that's a proper way to think about it. This is exactly how conspiracy series start. Um, you, don't, you don't go to thing C because thing A happened. We have to understand what B is. What if a, what if this is a pretext for using our own weapon against s- Russian spies? All these high level great spies are like, oh, I'm getting sick. We point the finger at the Russians and then we're like, now we can do it because they started it. Oh, you're saying that it's a it's a false flag so we can start cooking Russian brains. I think about it. You about it. I'm I'm thinking about it, but it's just all the sources. We, all the sources are CIA agents. I know, but think like we really need to wake up to the reality that is global, like how how the Cold War is currently being fought because that you can't actually get into a hot war with America. Like there are other ways that countries are trying to weaken us from within. And you know, if you've seen the movie. Uh, leave this world behind it's a very accurate represent representation of like how it might happen isn't and- that like a, a isn't that movie what didn't obama make that movie i don't know if he didn't, i don't know if he made that movie but he was like it. obama yeah. was like yeah that's that's like how we've been prepped about how exactly like it would happen bad, like, is that the one where like big ass monsters are outside and you have to like no that's that's uh, a quiet place no leave the world behind. that's the one that had the ship that ran aground because of hackers Right. I mean, there's soft, there's like underlying ways that foreign malicious entities can try to weaken oh, the United okay. States. Yeah. No, I, I agree 100% with that. Yes. It's like ins- insurgent warfare, but on a global level. I mean, the thing is, Unit 29155 um, was this uh, uh, top secret Russian intelligence unit that talked about how they would use techno- technology technologically advanced equipment on their targets. And that is the biggest link in evidence that they believe they found a document that can link this unit to the acoustic energy weapon. So, I mean, like think about all the crazy stuff that they were saying that Russian agents were doing in the cold war. Like we have made, you know, the entire world has made leaps and bounds in technology in the past couple of years. You don't think that they've done that exact same thing to spy technology. Well, there, there's, like, definitely, there's definitely there's uh, definitely things like that that our own government has worked on, like the heat rays and shit like that, the sonic yeah. cannons. So, yeah, Bill, you're not wrong. You're not wrong that, like, other countries are probably coming up with shit like this to fuck with us. Um, but there's, I guess there's a lot of research that needs to be done on it. You know what I'm scared of? I'm scared about drones. Terrified of drone warfare. Because kind of hyped for it because it means that humans won't be getting no, killed. No, but I mean, like, I'm scared that there's the drones be other are killing countries. humans, ain't they? Yeah, I'm scared that there's going to be there's going to be drone on drone. No, not drone on <laughs> no, drone, bro. Like, that's not what drones kill people. Kill I'm drones. scared that there's going to be drones from another country or terrorists that, that get their hands on some of these bomb drones that are really easy to make. They cost like 500 bucks. So what has happened to y'all? This is like doomsday scare shit. Is that where y'all need to log the fuck off the internet? I dog. do. I do. I saw, so I saw, <laughs> I, I saw two, talking about right now. I watched two drone bombing videos last week and now I'm just terrified. And then I did, I, I looked it up 
and there was a big article that was written about drone warfare, especially how it's going on in Russia and Ukraine right now, where both oh, sides have all these drone bombs and they're doing attacks on soldiers, attacks on infrastructure, where you just fly a drone into somebody or at somebody and it's a first person drone, right? So there's the, there are these soldiers in Russia and Ukraine that sit in rooms and there's uh, units of two. So one person will have what looks like an Apple Vision Pro on and then the person next to them will be holding a tablet that's watching a video feed from a monitor drone and they'll be guiding the person who's flying the drone via like their first person eyesight. They'll guide that person towards the enemy soldier. So this dude is just sitting here with his goggles on flying a drone that he's watching. He's looking through the camera, the front facing camera of a drone and he sees a soldier and then he just drives the drone at the soldier and it explodes and shit like that. Watching that terrorists definitely have that sort of capability. If they were to so the good news like that. about that kind of stuff is that the U S government has a pretty close hold on who has access, especially in the commercial market of who has access to uh, like the commercially available recreational drones. So if you notice like a lot of these drones with high quality cameras and stuff, you have to like create a login. Like you can't fly in F uh, FAA restricted air zones. Mm -hmm. I think so like you couldn't fly it over And the thing is the government has built those had uh, commercial companies build those into their um, uh, tech already. Right. So one, you would never be able to deconstruct it and like hack it per se without them knowing where that drone came from. You right. know what I'm saying? No, I, so, I, I hear that. If you buy a drone off, off the shelf, you can't fly it through Washington, D.C. Yeah. And even if you did build something that could fly like that, it, it would be very hard to use the technology and stuff that the Ukrainians have because the Ukrainians are using – american bought like american made drones like those suicide drones they're, they're not jerry rigging those those are we built those like the reason why they can destroy them themselves and then reconnect a new one to the exact same uh optimized drone killing setup is that we've built that out for them right yeah. so like they're using our technology that we gave them access to and sort of using it to improve our own technology and get field uh, data to improve our drones and like our suicide drones. No, I get that there, but there's just gotta be ways where people could build a drone and then fly it themselves. Right. That's what I I'm mean, scared of. I, your Arian's right though. I need, I do need to log off because that the article that I read really spooked me. Very scared about that. Yeah. I will log off now. I think um, I think collectively, everybody yeah. just log the fuck off for like a day or two, man. Uh, Billy, what's what else is on your list here? Uh, we have uh, the eclipse is next Monday. Uh, did not oh, yeah. realize that. Yeah, so a little behind it's the scenes Monday. here. Billy Billy texted the group chat early this morning saying, "Hey, we should time doing the show where we can all go outside and watch the eclipse at the same time." Which uh, can can I stop you there? Yep. How would that be in the show, Billy? Well, I was honestly thinking that one of us would log, get into the Zoom on our phone, walk outside, check in and get a live look at the, the eclipse. Just a little fun thing to add to the show because a lot of people are going to miss it because they're going to be in work and we could provide some content out of that and discuss it live, which might be fun. I don't know. Yeah. I like to suggest fun, cool things for the it's, show. It's I an think interesting it would be idea. It, that would be fun if yeah if we, cause like if we all do it remotely yeah that might be a that's not a bad idea I don't hate it hey yeah. like wh okay, what's it look like from New York oh it looks different from Chicago but I now continue it, with the rest of the story <laughs> yeah so no Billy wait well, I got an interjection uh huh Maddie bro I know I'm sorry yeah. Maddie bro I know I know I know I know I know so I I when I got that text from Billy. I knew that the eclipse was not going to be today. I knew it was going to be in a week. So I text, I created a new group chat with everybody except for Billy on it. I said, no one tell Billy that the eclipse isn't until next week. <laughs> and so we were going to go outside. But then no more than two minutes later, I know. Maddie texts the group, the main group with Billy in it says, isn't it next week? 
We, it's I, he goes, you've got to fucking be kidding me. I had, I had just, I had just looked at my phone. I was posting something on Macro, and I just looked at my phone, and I saw Billy's text before I saw the other group chat, and I, by it, it was bad. But then I unsent it immediately, and I don't think Billy saw the text. Honestly, message. I didn't see it. Yeah, yeah. I unsent really it tricky. like immediately. Apple, and, this. And so then Billy sends a picture with the path of totality of the eclipse where it says <laughs> April 8th. Uh -huh. And PFT is like, okay, he's trolling us. I thought Billy was pulling an April Fool's Day joke on us. And I was like, no, I'm pretty sure he's serious. And you, and so you were trying to figure out how to counteract his prank. Yeah, my idea was that, Billy, I thought you were pranking us, so I was going to have everybody go outside and then get somebody from the office to like come up behind us as we were live and uh, pretend to mug us on the street. And then you would feel bad about pulling an April Fool's Day joke on us for being outside. Like it was your Dude, fault. I, I I have way too much going on right now to have planned something that intricately. He's running for office, PFT. <laughs> <laughs> Bigger fish to fry. Did yeah. you know the signatures. Did you know the picture you sent said April 8th on it? So, so honestly, I was driving and they put out a bunch of signs saying eclipse, uh, eclipse occurring Monday. Uh, and it's, it, it was April 8th, 4 8. And I wasn't, I was driving, so I didn't look at the exact date. And I was like, oh man, they wouldn't have put those out if it wasn't today. They wouldn't put it out a full week before. Um, but then I realized, because I was looking into it and I was like trying to get, uh, but it was, it was a random Monday in April. So I was like, oh yeah, it must be today. I can't yeah. believe these guys thought I was doing like a a double April Fool's prank. I thought you were I thought you were doing an April Fool's prank on us because you also unsent something. Yeah. Oh. You sent two photos and then you unsent the second one. Mm -hmm. So we're in a cold the war of photo. Of, uh huh. <laughs> the second photo was from a wrong eclipse. Oh, <laughs> from God. an eclipse that had occurred. <laughs> And I was like, well, if we're just unsending things in the chat, I'm not going to be like, oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. I'm just going to unsend it because I guess that's what we do in this chat nowadays. Oh, it's your fault, Mad Dog. Sorry. <laughs> no, but yeah. But this is actually fucked up. You could gaslight that. We talked about how you can gaslight the hell out of people with this unsent message stuff. Can I even look back at what you unsent? No. Nope. No, that's the whole point of me unsending it. That's not gaslighting. You unsent it. I Madeline McKenzie may still see this message on devices where the software hasn't been updated. <laughs> Ah, mm. Mm. maybe on my like computer. I can still see it, Billy. Let's check. You can I, see it, yeah. yeah if you, so if you I can still updated. see it on my laptop. Yeah, same. Yeah, if you have oh, okay, cool. and you I can, can still see, see my unsent message on my laptop, but I can't oh. see it on my phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So this was all. So was this what took us so long to get on the Zoom at one o'clock? No. 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 We're ready, but yeah, Billy, we were, we were going to not really April Fools you. We were just going to like not tell you that it wasn't today, then go outside and be like, yeah, Billy, you were wrong. The sun's still out because it's not April 8th right now. <laughs> but then we thought you were April foolsing us. So then we had to figure out a double prank on you. So then you were going to get we, mugged. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the, that's the best idea that I came up with, but not, not a very good idea. Who's going to oh, mug you? Hate it. I was just going to get somebody from the office, like probably for stool. I mean, you wouldn't even really have, you just go outside for long and <laughs> give yourself a 15 minute window. You'll probably get mugged. Oh, big <laughs> oh my over God. Oh, right. You could just pray. Me just getting you to go outside. Is yeah. A prank in itself. April fools. Oh, they, they arrested somebody in the, the TikTok punching. Yeah. Did you guys oh, see that? Yes. And what he's is, a what notorious is, is guy the, who runs for office all the time. Yeah, he's one of these psychos that tries to run for mayor all the time on the yes. Freedom Party, I believe. Yep. His name is, oh gosh, what was his name? Uh, Skiboki Stora. And he's also a TikToker. Plot twist. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he, What that is was the his... TikTok punch? What is this? Oh. So, we weren't here. So, Arian, uh, there were several women that got punched in the face all in the same location in New York City last week. Like what unprovoked. <laughs> Yeah, uh, in broad daylight in the middle of the street. Yeah, in like a very busy part of town, and uh, so they they filed complaints with law enforcement. They went viral because they were posting like the immediate aftermath of getting punched on TikTok, where they had these big ass welts on their face, bloody lips, the whole nine. And so a couple days He's after that, punching them because they're on TikTok, or they just got punched and put it on TikTok. Uh, he was just they punching punched. women, and, and then, then they he... made TikToks being like, "I I was just walking down the street and gotcha. he randomly punched me in the head." Mm -hmm. gotcha. Yeah. So so they arrested some guy. It's still unclear if he's behind all of them. 
I feel like it's probably a safe bet to say that he is. Um, but he's also a TikToker that does it. Yeah, and he runs for office often in New York, obviously to no avail, but um, he makes TikToks a lot. And there's a lot of TikToks of him going up to women on the street and like making them wildly uncomfortable. Um, so he has like a track record of this, and this is his third arrest in six months. Yeah, big weirdo. Yeah. Um, but. I think he's probably the guy doing all of this. Cause we were talking about it last week. He did it in a very small radius. I was going to dress up as a woman and try to get punched by him. And, uh, that was gonna be hilarious. If I caught him. Yeah. Yeah. Hilarious. But yeah, so there was like probably a dozen women who got punched by this guy in like the matter of 48 hours. But I hope it's just him. I hope that it wasn't a, a group of people, but it sounds like it was him. Yeah. But like, I don't know how long you go to jail for something like that. In New York, you don't. Uh, for like a day or two. Five assaults. I mean, if they can connect him to all of it, it's close to a dozen. Yeah. But, I mean, I, f- I, have, a, I have a sneaking suspicion that once this guy is back on the streets, he will he punch might, again. He will punch again. Well, he'll get released without bail, probably, if they can only pin him for one. So, what are what are the conditions of bail in New York City? If... If you're a threat to the community, it seems like this guy is very clearly a threat to the community, right? Mm-hmm. Well, if I'd they can so. only pin him for one, no. I mean, the, but the, it's so it, this one is so high profile that I feel like they would. Like, so were the guys denied. who killed the shot the cop and they got let out. Yeah, but this is I. Yeah. I get I this get, is worse than no shooting a cop. Well, the guys that shot the cop, are they out on bail right now? Not the, the cop murderers? not the cop who just died. There was another, I believe I'm yeah, correct in this. They were Venezuelan uh, They shot it was in like Times Square, yeah, right? They Well that was another that was there was two instances. There was one instance where they beat up a cop, and then there was another instance when a, a guy shot at a cop and then he got caught in Yonkers. Um he was apprehended. If you shoot at a cop. If you have a gun, you'll get arrested because um, that's like a – and they caught him with a gun. But if, you, if they assaulted him, they got out on bail. So I – Okay, I, yeah, maybe it wasn't a shooting. Maybe they beat up a w- cop. W- what I read yeah. about the, the Times Square beating up a cop thing, there were two people that were arrested in that incident that were not involved in the assault that got let out. They got initially arrested for the, uh, for the act, and then they were released. And I think they they might be suing the NYPD. I'm reading no, right no, now. No, no, no. They're, they're on camera beating up the cop. Then they got apprehended and beating up the cop. And then they flipped off the camera like Tupac. Mm-hmm. And then got released. Those, those two people got released. Because I know that there are some people that got also arrested for that that did not get charged. They were probably the ones not beating up the cop. Okay, but the the ones that did beat up the cop got released on bail. Yes, it's it's really like I I was literally I think I told this story the other day I was literally in a, a Dwayne Reed and a guy came in he took all the Gatorades, um and as someone who was trying to buy a cold Gatorade I was like what the fuck and he stuffed them in his pants walked out they called the cops and the cops were like yeah I can't do anything about it. Okay, so what I'm what I'm reading right now. The Venezuelan man became the subject of national attention for allegedly kicking a police officer in Times Square, then flipping off news cameras on his way out of court. It was cleared of wrongdoing on Friday after prosecutors concluded he played no role in the attack. It was initially believed that a person seen on video from the brawl wearing a black and white jacket with pink shoes was Juan Boeda, according to police. However, the Manhattan DA's office said that person was actually 25-year-old Mark Esty, who has since been arrested and charged with assault on a police officer. So they exonerated this guy and then they arrested somebody else. Yeah. So if you see the video, they all know each other. So he was just there, but he didn't commit any of the actual assault. Right. So I don't feel bad. He got booked. Yeah. Well, for no, knowing somebody's not a crime though. Right. But like if, you were hanging out. Okay. Yeah. It's not a crime, but like if you and a bunch of friends, <laughs> if I'm hanging assault, out, if I'm hanging out with Hank 
And then Hank sees a cop and he punches the cop in the face. And then he runs away and if Hank you gets happen arrested. to be one of the only of a group that aren't assaulting a police officer, I think it's OK if they check you out, if you weren't assaulting. No, bro. Yeah, I, th- I think that it's, it's reasonable if I'm in that group to, like, bring me in for questioning and see That's, yeah. what this was about, that whole thing. I don't think they should arrest you, but I think it, it's totally fine that they got detained. Right. So they we, all got out so, anyway. So we, so we agree. It was it was wrong to arrest the guy that didn't do it. They didn't arrest him. They figured out it wasn't him. Then they released him. So he was cleared of wrongdoing on Friday. Uh, so they did arrest him. After he went viral as the smug face of the brawl. And he was in national news as a person that assaulted a police officer when he, he did not do it. Right. That's do we think that's good or do we think that's bad? No, what's bad is that because there's no cash bail, you have guys who are able to get out onto the street after committing several crimes. Like, for example, you can you can commit three, I'm pretty sure, three liquor store robberies in a day before you get locked up. No, I, that, I, that is the that I, is I, the metric. I I agree with the fact that if you're a criminal and you're a threat to the community and you get arrested, you should not be put out back on the streets immediately. I think most people agree with that. Right. But, but it, it happens. It, but, in, but in the, yes. And I, I think that that needs to stop. But in this guy's case, he didn't do anything. And then he was all over the national news as somebody who beat up a cop and it was not him. Lander. I mean, I think he more made it, went viral across the United States for flipping off the camera. I mean, in relation to someone actually beating up a cop. Also not illegal. Right. Protected under the first amendment. Right. Right. But like, that's why he got all over the news. I don't know why he got all all over the news, but, um, I Billy, I just, it's a bad scene out here. I, I, I we got to do, and some people are trying to, I understand. I understand that when uh, you commit a violent crime, you should be locked up. Yes. I agree with that. hundred percent. We, we have common ground on that one. Yeah. I, I I wasn't disagreeing with you. Um, So yeah. How did we get to the, uh, Oh, we were talking about the TikTok puncher guy. Do we know if he's, is he still arrested? Yeah. That's, because they can't set a cash bail for him. So let's see. Let's look that up. Man who allegedly. Um, so. Uh, I think what they're trying to figure out is where this guy is. Yeah, they arrested him. He had been. Okay, this makes no sense. They arrested him and they're holding him on ten thousand dollars bail. But didn't mm-hmm. they get rid of cash bail? I don't. Probably not in all cases. Okay. I think that's one of those things where, if you're a threat to the community, then they have cash bail. And if you're not, I don't know. I don't know how bail works in New York. I'll be totally honest with you. But I don't think that I don't think New York City eliminated cash bail. I don't remember hearing about that. Uh, in 2019, New York ended the use of money bail in jail for most cases involving misdemeanor and lower level felonies. The law, which was implemented in January 2020, sought to make release rather than detention the default in these cases. However, the goal has been undermined in subsequent legislative se- uh, sessions after politicized concerns about rising crime. Uh, during the pandemic, drove uh, lawmakers to pass three rounds of revisions to the law. It now includes several exceptions, allowing judges to set bail in some cases involving lower level offenses. Okay. Okay. That's good. I just, did you guys ever see the video of the guy in the McDonald's with a hatchet going nuts? No. And then the new, the New York post interviewed him that Monday after he got out. That was wild. Did he attack somebody with a hatchet? Yes. <laughs> and then they let him out. I, I was just assuming that it had happened in this case um, because I'd seen other examples, but I, I don't know if the reforms were actually instituted. 
Okay, so hopefully this guy in the TikTok thing is is in jail and stays in jail. I think he's still in jail. I don't there think there's any, been any update. Okay, anything else on the sheet, Billy? Did uh, you get the signatures? Not on the sheet, but yo, did y'all discuss um uh the Kendrick Drake J Cole situation? So I I talked about it a little bit last week, not on this show. I don't understand what's going on. Can I you got you, brother. Okay, all right. You, okay, because this is like. You know what I mean? Like it's like us ex- explaining ERA to you. I got explain you the Kendrick <laughs> Drake beef. I got you. Okay, so okay. for for context, all right. And I didn't know. And if you want a deeper look, uh, a deeper dive, there's a dude by the name of What's the Dirt on YouTube, and he has this. Shit, I don't know how this man did this, but he extensively draws out the beef between Kendrick and Cole, and the beef between Kendrick and Drake. And it goes back years, so it kind of seems like it came out of out of nowhere. So uh, go to What's the Dirt on YouTube. If you are, he he put out a video the day before Kendrick drops his diss track on Drake and Cole. The day before he put a video explaining everybody's beef and like yo, he was like, I would bet my YouTube channel that Kendrick has a, a response to the to the first person shooter. First person shooter is a song by Drake and J Cole. All right, so I'm gonna give you the, the Spark Notes version. He has like an hour long video about the shit. I got your PST. All right. Okay. So K- Kendrick and Drake, right? And the reason why this is so big is because I got it's never been to this magnitude. Like I think the biggest hip hop beef was probably like Pac and Big, right? But to me, this one can can eclipse that because Drake is literally the number one artist in the world, right? If not, you know, number two, number three, right? But at at, at, a, at a certain time, he has been the number one artist in the world, right? Cole is one of the number one hip hop artists in the world, and Kendrick is too, right? So we have like mm. the big three of rap sparring. That shit is huge, right? And I, I'm a, I'm an avid hip hop fan and hip hop lover, so this shit is dope. I like this kind of shit, right? All right, so to get into it, Kendrick and Cole have been subbing each other for years, right? Subbing meaning like they'll drop little subliminal lines here and there, uh, talking shit about each other, right? They were they started off really cool, but I think. This is what I personally think happened. They, they were supposed to drop an actual uh, track together. I'm, I'm sorry, a project together where it was Kendrick and J. Cole. They were supposed to collaborate on a project. The rumblings of that, they even have made songs together, but the rumblings of that kind of died down um, after Kendrick drops. Of, I don't know if y'all remember this because you probably didn't rap like that, but like Kendrick dropped a, a verse called Control that kind of shut the internet down. Everybody's talking about it. It's called Control. It's on Big Shines. Y'all, y'all remember that? Okay, cool. No. So in the song Control, Kendrick calls out like the entire rap game where he's like, he, he one of his lines was like, I'm usually homeboys with the same people I'm rhyming with, the, with I'm rhyming with, but this is hip hop. Niggas should know what time it is. And he calls out Cole Drake by name, right? So that left everybody feeling kind of funny. And ever since then, him and Drake fell off, right? Because they had a song together too, because Drake thought it was a harsh words, right? Um and so ever since then, that was around 2013, 14, maybe 15. Uh, they've been subbing each other. They've been subbing each other on songs, saying a little slight stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And so in in the new first person shooter, which is Dr- on Drake's new album, J. Cole's on there, and he has a line that says, uh, people argue who the hardest MC. Is it K Dot? Is it Aubrey and me? K Dot is Kendrick, Aubrey is Drake. And um and he said, but I feel like I'm Muhammad Ali, whatever. So he obviously feel like the best one. Every rapper should feel like that. Um, but because they've been subbing each other, Drake and Kendrick have been subbing each other for years. Uh, uh, Kendrick and Cole have been subbing each other for years. Kendrick heard that, and he heard J. Cole on that same song say, since everybody think that they steppers, fuck it. It's their breakfast. I'm going to clean up my plate. Kendrick's last co- album was called Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. So it's another subtle little, you know what I'm saying? Like a subtle little slight, something, mm-hmm. a subtle little slight. So Kendrick was like, you know what? Fuck it. I want all the smoke. So he went at Drake and Cole. So he said, motherfuck the big three. It's just big me. Now I lost my shit. I love Kendrick. I think Kendrick is probably one of the goats. Uh, he's my favorite of the three. But uh, it was just so big because it was like shock value, but also like the way he did it. These are two of the biggest hip hop artists maybe of all time. And Kendrick said, I want both y'all. That is yeah. just some of the hungriest shit that you could possibly do. And I was hyped when this shit happened, dog. It was crazy. Like I said, the dude, uh, that what's the dirt dude on YouTube, he, he does a brilliant breakdown of everything. 
um, he dropped that video a day before. There's no way he would have known Kendrick was going to come back with the verse. And so his video blew up because it was like so detailed and so thorough. And it just was the it was beautiful timing. So, you know, congratulations to him. That's dope for his content or whatever. But um, yeah, I think it's a beautiful thing for hip hop. I don't think Drake is going to respond. He may. I, I could be wrong and I would be happy if he is. But I think he has more to lose. Um, I, I, and I don't know if I don't know if Cole will, I, maybe Cole will. I don't know. But if I'm if I'm in it, if I'm Drake, if I'm Cole, I'm responding. This is hip hop, dog. Like you got rap. Yeah. I was so, hyped. so um, I feel like Drake would get smoked because with Drake, when he gets mean, it's always like, yeah, he's mean, but it's always got this like very polished air to him. Like I don't want to say Drake seems soft, but he a little sensitive, of, like for sure. He yeah, he's sensitive. sensitive. Drake gets his like his bravado from Jay Prince. Jay Prince is a dude in Houston who's like a street dude, right? Jay Prince runs Houston. Anybody who has ever been like any kind of famous in Houston, you you cross paths with Jay Prince. I've seen Jay Prince. He was on my podcast earlier, right? He's in that life, right? And so Drake came to Houston when Wayne signed him in like 2008, and he kind of ran the scenes. And so Drake has like protection from that standpoint. <clears throat> And so Drake gets his bravado from that. So when he was going to the push of T beef, which he got smoked on, um, you know, it almost went there, right? Because Drake's Drake, Drake has people. So that's where he gets his bravado from. But see, in this instance, we just talking rap. He's talented, right? My gripe with Drake has never been that he can't rap. He can rap. He has a great pen. He has melodically probably the most brilliant. I would say artist, not just rapper of all time, just melodically, he's like brilliant uh, melodies. Um, but I think he just don't grow as an artist. You know what I'm saying? Like his first, you know, uh, you know, album or uh, project, it's about you know women, trouble with women, trouble with because you're rich and you know nobody you know can relate to that. And if you look at his last album, it's much of the same stuff: money, women, trouble with fame. Like that's his. He hasn't mm -hmm. grown. That's my biggest gripe with him. And Kendrick, the reason why I love Kendrick so much is because <clears throat> he touches on social issues in a very deep way. And if you want another, though, PT, you, are you a fan of Kendrick like that? Yeah, I like Kendrick. All right, I'm going to send you a video, okay? Because I didn't know. I had no idea. He made an album called Damn, right? You remember that album? No, but... you remember? Okay, so you're not a fan of Kendrick. Okay, that's fine. I, li I like Kendrick. <clears throat> yeah, no, Kendrick, okay. So he made an album called Damn, okay? And he's the first art hip-hop artist in history to win a Pulitzer. He won a Pulitzer Prize because of this. So Kendrick is different, bro. He's like a writer's writer. So the reason why he won a Pulitzer is because his album, it's a, it's a story, Okay. And the brilliant part about it is, and I'll, I'll send you the video, it's like an hour and it breaks it down. I knew it was a story, but I didn't really put all the pieces together because I got shit to do. But long story short, the album Damn is a story about like his you know, salvation as a man and his growing up in where he grew up in Compton. And he tells the story through the songs and the song titles, okay? And the reason why it's so brilliant is because every song is a part of that story. And then... A few weeks later, after he drops Damn, he releases like the collector's edition, which is all the tracks in reverse. Okay. And so it's a story about him being saved because of the last song on the on the album, which is called Duckworth. Duckworth is a song about um this guy who was gonna rob a KFC, but the but he he did it because the guy that was working with him or working there at the KFC, uh uh he he was like he didn't want the place to get robbed, so he gave him some free chicken every time he pulled up. Right. Okay. And he was like, okay, that's that's dope. And so because he, he didn't rob the place and kill everybody in there, that dude that worked at the KFC was was Kendrick. Kendrick's dad, I'm sorry. But Kendrick's dad actually happened. And the dude that was planning on rob it, robbing it is the is top dog. So T D, uh, that's the people who signed Kendrick initially. So he he tells that story like if he had robbed it, like he dies, Kendrick grows up without a father. And so if you if you listen to the album how originally it was front to front to back. It tells a story about how he was uh, ruthless and then he found his salvation, you know, through, you know, doing the right thing in God and all that stuff, right? But if if you reverse it, <clears throat> the story is he, he, that guy actually kills his dad 
and then he he starts off with God and then he loses himself in the streets. It's fucking it's it's magnificent, dog. And so he won a Pulitzer because of this shit. And that's the kind of deep content that that Kendrick makes and all of his socially like aware content. Like it, he brought to Pimp a Butterfly is one of the most brilliant albums. And he yeah. like, he took a he took a chance. You go you go from Good Kid, Mad City, which is one of the greatest hip hop albums of all time, to go to to Pimp a Butterfly, which is like all jazz, right? Live instrumentation. The dude is just different. He's brilliant. And so it's like when you go back to the beef, Drake don't really have a lot of ammunition against somebody like that, whereas. You know Kendrick kind of does, and that's what beef is. It's like you can who how, how you gonna pull each other's cards. I got Kendrick in that battle. Yeah, Kendrick. So to pimp a butterfly is an awesome album. I love unreal. that album. It's unreal. Uh, but yeah, going up against a very creative guy like that, Drake is just gonna be like, I'm richer than you. Yeah, and it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be there's another reason why like I don't like Drake kind of like you know rub me the wrong way is because so one of the things he says, and this is for my hip hop heads out there. But one of the things that he said in um, his Elsa uh, uh, Wilson, Elliot, Elliot Wilson interview, he said, um, like, you, you don't really look at Drake as a black artist, right? You look at Drake as, you, like, you don't say the black artist Drake, right? But like most other people that you do, but it's because, like, you don't ever hear Drake any talk about any kind of social issues or what's going on. You had one of the biggest protests in, you know, civil rights history happen on, under your rain and you don't say anything about it you know what i'm saying but but kendrick was actually in the protest and he always addresses those issues and so like to me that's the angle drake takes is like you're not really about that life and and kendrick's gonna yeah you know, it's just it isn't this is like two different people drake is like a pop star you know what i mean yeah so Good question about yeah. damn um the album by kendrick Go ahead. Quick question. Go ahead. So, uh, loyalty. I think that's a song that a lot of people recognize. Where does that fall in the in the storyline? Right. So, um, when you look at um, the track list, let me pull the track list. I got loyalty. Um, yeah. So, like inside my DNA. No, DNA is the first the first song, and so the first song was yeah. So DNA is the first actual song on on the on the on the, on the, on the project. And the DNA, he's talking about all the kind of evil shit in his DNA when you listen to it back to or front to back, right? Uh -huh. Lo loyalty kind of falls in the middle where he starts to like um, gain his like relevance for the the you know the accolades for the what he's what he's starting to accomplish in his in his life, and so that's where he he addresses it in in that song a little bit and actually has. Um, Rihanna sang some shit at the end that kind of like ties it all together. It's like it's really bro. I'm gonna send you, I'm gonna send it to y'all in the group chat. It's 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 fucking unreal the way he did this. So this this is good for hip hop, having oh, beefs a, between like the biggest artists in the world. It's amazing, bro. It's amazing. Like, the 1990s were defined by rap beefs. Yeah, I think that got toxic because it turned it, very violent. Yeah, it became yeah it became like street warfare. And to me, that's never that's never the, that's never the goal. But to I don't this this is not gonna go there to me, in my opinion, because I think Kendrick is from that, you know, background. But I don't he's not no banger, right? So he got people, but Kendrick is on some like rap shit, you know what I mean? And Drake isn't he not from that cloth, but he does have that protection. But I don't think I don't think I don't think it's gonna go there. I, to me. This is just like people writing. J Cole is not J Cole is the, a Buddha, right? He's just like super peaceful. But he's not really battle tested as far as like him getting into like rap beef. And so like that's why it's so like exciting to me because it's like you have three of the best, almost the best. You could argue if, if these, if what, any one of these three is in anybody's top 10, I'm not going to argue with you, right? And they all going at it in their primes. Like, well, let's do this. This is great. It sounds Quick like question. professional wrestling a little bit. That's, I would, I, that's a great analogy, actually. When you, when you like understand rap, Rap is very caricature driven, right? And so you fall in love with the the people's stories and it gets very emotional. Like, I don't know how y'all's barbershops are, right? But like when you go to the barbershop or you, you with the homies, it's like, who's the top five? And the, and the battle uh, and, the, and the debates get like super like, yeah, get the fuck out of here, man. Yeah. And it gets really, you know, it gets really emotional because 
I don't know. I've never really heard y'all argue about like, who's the top five country artists and, you know, and you know, y'all going at it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's never really been a thing. There's no there's no diss tracks in country, right? Imagine George. I, I would actually be lit, though. Like, I would George, love to see that shit would be Bryan fire. Taylor Swift. That shit would be hard. Imagine them writing a diss track on each other. You know how excited y'all would be? You know what I'm saying? It would be dope. Yeah. So this is what we're experiencing right now, where it's like, yo, the one of the biggest names in hip-hop just went at two of the biggest names in hip-hop. And we like, let's fucking go. Actually, the closest thing that country music had to that was uh, the guy who did the Applebee's song uh, <laughs> wrote a, sort of a a kind of diss track to Zach Bryan in response to a tweet that Zach Bryan did say about like Ty, uh, Tyler Childers doesn't get on the radio, but the Applebee's song does. And then he wrote a sort of like a weird track at Zach Bryan, which was kind of ridiculous looking back on it. I, yeah, yeah. It, it would be but, so funny. I there was a, a country beef back in what was that like the nineties? Oh yeah. Was, between, uh, um, I was gonna say David Allen Coe. Did he yeah. write a song like "If That Ain't Country, Then Kiss My Ass"? Yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> didn't um, um, Toby Keith have beef with Chris Christopherson? Uh, Toby Keith had beef with Chris Christopherson and the Dixie Chicks. Big yeah. beef with the Dixie Chicks, but that was because of the Iraq War. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. See, the beautiful chicks were like anti George Bush, anti Iraq War. Toby Keith was very pro military doing USO shows, and uh, country stations all across America were like smashing Dixie Chicks albums. People talk about, uh, you know, that that mean Dick Cheney profited from the Iraq War, whatever. Toby Keith profited from the Iraq War, <laughs> big time, immensely. May he rest in peace. Yeah, and Alan Jackson. Yeah. Yep. Yep. The beautiful thing about hip hop, though, is like it, it was, it was, it was born from competition, right? Like it was, it was, it was created in competition. So cats used to like stand on corners, like they used to be we call ciphers, right? So cats used to stand on corners or wherever y'all meet, lunch times, whatever the case may be, bunch of people around, two people battling each other, like either clowning each other, but doing doing it with words. That's like that's how hip hop was created. You know what I'm saying? You can find old clips of Biggie back in the day in a cipher. You know what I mean? Like. And so, like, this is the essence of hip-hop. It's, going, it's very competitive, right? So the essence of hip-hop is, like, always there's always going to be rap beef because it stems from, like, the battle and era. And so, to me, this is this is the beauty of it, man. I'm hyped. Good so question. The, uh, the, the David Allen Coe song came out in 1977. The chorus is, if that ain't country, it'll hair lip the Pope. If that ain't country, it's a damn good joke. I've seen the Grand Ole Opry. I've met Johnny Cash. If that ain't country, I'll kiss your ass. Because people also should say that song does have the N word in it. So that's, and it's from 1977, very long time ago when, that's when wild. that was a song <laughs> that would be like a hit. Yeah. Quick, quick, quick question about uh, Drake and he, he gets his, he gets his cred from Houston. Does that mean specifically that if Drake had an issue, he could call upon these guys in Houston. I forget the exact to like do violence for him. That's the whitest shit I've ever heard, though. I'm just, I'm just wondering, like, because you hear this, like, he's got. He, so, like, he, when you run around, though, when you run around, like, so, like, yeah, anytime you, you, you have a megastar, like, you have security, right? Right. Well, in urban areas, like, you can't just roam around, right? right. You just can't. Be, that's people's territory, right? Like, I'm, and it sounds silly saying it, but it's, it's no different than, like, y- y'all don't want. Mexicans, you know, in the border, it's the same. It's the same thing, right? To a certain extent, right? Because what they're what they're doing is their territory is like over drug spots, right? People bang for drug spots, you know, what I'm saying for the most part. And there's other different ter- for different reasons, right? But like, as as a you know, as an entertainer like that, most likely you're not gonna run into no beef like that because niggas don't want to fuck you. But sometimes people get robbed. It is what it is, right? And you'll have like I don't know if you ever heard uh, like. Snoop, he'll go get a rapper gets robbed in LA. They'll call Snoop to go get his chain back, stuff like that, right? Yeah, because a lot of a lot of cats like in those areas, they'll rob famous rappers or famous people to get ransom. Like, okay, I'll get your chain back, give me ten racks. You know what I'm saying? Something like that. Like that'll that'll be a play, right? Um, and so Drake ran into the crowd over here, which is run by Jay Prince, and everybody know Jay Prince is. I'm not saying nothing new, right? Jay, Jay Prince is he's that dude in these in these parts. Um, so, like, if and plus he was the cash cow for Jay Prince and and that industry. Like Drake is the cash cow, so you protect the cash cow. And so Drake ain't gonna get into to me. Ain't gonna get into no beef. 
like like that. But you know, you you, you never know. I think. I think once you start to get a lot of money and influence and power, like you get a little inflated ego because his earlier tracks, he wasn't talking about sending nobody for nobody. But nowadays you hear him, he's, he's more than likely not, you know, let, let those kind of lines fly where he finna send somebody or he finna do something, something like that. So it's like, if you, if you have a guy in a city, then you know that nobody else in that city is going to fuck with you. And if they do, then you've got a guy that's got your back. Yeah, you got, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you're going to have to account for the reasons as to why you, you, you touch somebody. Like, yeah. So hypothetically, if... It's allies. It's... Right. We're but, sending aid to Ukraine right now because those are our allies, right? Same shit. I know, but I'm I'm trying to f figure out, like, the he... So does he go hide in Houston if he gets into a beef because he knows nah, that... Nah, 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 nah. It's not like that, bro. It's not like that. Most likely, Drake, if you don't want no problem, just stay in your house. Ain't nobody going to go to your house. It's not that serious. But when you move in certain areas, like, you can run into problems. Like, because it just is what it is. People have territories. People feel strongly about the territories. It's just like, you know, patriotic America. You feel strongly about this territory. And you're willing to defend it. It's the same thing. I understand that. But, like, if Drake's in L.A. or Drake's in New York, how does being affiliated with Jay Prince in Houston help his safety. That's what I'm sort of trying to. Well, if, if you're, if you're Drake and you go to LA, don't go to any of the neighborhoods that just don't go. Like, there's no point. Like you are food. You understand? Like people are starving. Some, and some of these people are they hungry. That's why they rob. Right. And so if you walking around with like, anytime I travel, I don't travel with this jewelry in any kind of part of town that I'm not familiar with. There's no reason to. Like you can get stuck up. Like people get robbed. It happens. You know, like you they can sell this. Like that's just what it is. So I just I just move like that. He should move like that as well. But I think what you're asking is like, you know, you have certain people that will protect you in certain places. Uh huh. And that extends. Okay. It's an interesting dynamic. It is. It's it's a lot like just any other beef there is. Like any beef in the entertainment industry, it's good for everybody if you manage it well. Like people, yeah. it it'll give you more fame. More people listen to your response, give people more to talk about. They get more invested in in your art. They get more invested in like people that you feature. It's just good. It's good. A lot of buzz. Should we Absolutely. try to start beef? Son of Boy Dad again? No, no, that. They're, they're... They're not into beef. Um, Billy, you are starting beef. You're creating all all kinds of beef. Yeah. Yeah. I'm system. About, I'm, I'm about to get into some serious beef. We find out if we're in the fray Friday. Might so even be a little earlier. All right. So what what's your signature count up to now? 2,100. And you need how many? I need I – need, I already have over the amount we need, 1,250. It's just now if they're certification because they might throw out 80% of the signatures just because you just don't know how it's going to go. So, and we find out Friday, uh, we hand them in Thursday. I don't, I, I need to figure out the exact process. I don't know if it's going to take a day. I don't know if it's going to take over the weekend. Um, but we, we might be getting on that ballot. If <laughs> we might be making it to the second level. Which is would be huge. And um, what's the next level? What does that entail? The Republican primary for New York's District Three. <laughs> Are there debates? No, no debates. I'm actually going to be honest. Uh, when this all is said and done, at some point, maybe after I serve my first term, uh, there is a lot of insight that I'd love to uh, talk about on this podcast because it has been a very interesting ride. And uh, it's been amazing meeting so many people, getting signatures, hearing um, from constituents their uh, thoughts and opinions and worries. And uh, a lot of people are excited for this campaign. So it's it's pretty awesome. Billy, you should challenge you should challenge them to a debate, knowing that it'll never happen. Just call them out. Because well, you my can't. opponents are too scared to debate me. You can't. I just don't like, for example, there's 10 people running in the primary. Not all of them might get the signatures. So once we find out who's on the ballot, who knows? Actually, uh, shout out uh, 
Jim toes. He, he sent me a nice message over Easter. He's another person running. Um, I may have tweeted something about his name, uh, but he, he's a really nice guy and uh, I, I wish him the best. That's not beef, Billy. I may have said, uh, no, we, Jim toes is name literally translates to athlete's foot. That's what you said it PFT. So, um, but Jim toes is a really nice guy. I mean, that's a toss. Um, that's an easy one. Yeah. But, uh, Jim, I really hope he also Jim makes means a ballot. Fungal. Jim means fungal. Well, no, like Jim as in Jim, like G Y M going to the gym. That's a reach. But I think that's right. Gym? I think that's right there. Jim, Jim toes. I, I think that's pretty good. Big I, T? I thought you were saying like the Jimmy's and Joe's. Like it's the Jimmys and Joes, not the X's and O's. Okay, I I didn't put together G Y M. Yeah, G Y M toes. That, I I felt pretty proud of that one, but then I was like, P F T is gonna get this in two seconds, and it, it took me like twenty minutes to think of this. No, so I think I think that's fair. I think that's a fair shot, Billy. But it's nice that he reached out. No, it, it basically, yeah. Then he was like, "Hey, happy Easter! I really hope you hit your signature goal. Um, rooting for you." And I was like, "Thanks, Jim Toes." Killing Good you with name. kindness. Yeah. Is that his real name? Yep. But Jim Toes might not make the ballot. I hope he I hope he does. All right. So so Billy, you, you just need to uh challenge them to, to debates. I want to I want to see Billy in a debate more than I need air to breathe right now. We can host if I, I promise if we mm-hmm. get to the uh if we get to the general election, I will debate the incumbent, Tom Swazi. I'll challenge him to a debate. But no one's gonna want to debate before the the general. That's, but you're ready. But you would. I I would, but you know we don't know who's on there. But you would. You're not scared. I'm not scared. Anytime, anyone. Billy will debate you. I think we should bring back dueling. <laughs> I think if we if we did more dueling, there would be less unsanctioned violence. If we just sanctioned the duels. Okay, let's do it. First act, day one in office, duel. Start Love slapping slap. your fellow Congress members. <laughs> Like what's yeah, up? I mean, you know, piece of legislation three hundred five, dog. I don't like yeah. it. <laughs> Why did you put this in the bill? So you don't like, want to, You don't. This is bipartisan support, motherfucker. I think like ninety percent of Congress people, if you slapped them, they would die. <laughs> yeah, that's part of the problem. Literally, if you want to know why I'm doing this, it's because we need to get a voice of young America into Congress. I think part of um, the prerequisites for being able to be voted into Congress, you should have to drink a McDonald's Sprite. And be observed for two hours. And see if you can and process if, it. And if you're fine, you can continue running. <laughs> a grimace shake. No, the not sprite, turn. that spicy sprite. Yeah. Yeah. That extra kick to it. It's so good. Nothing hits like McDonald's Sprite. All right. Spicy Sprite. One one last thing. <laughs> PFT. If if I get on the ballot, uh-huh. uh, I was talking about this with Roan. Um would Pop Punk perform at a rally? Mm, I'll have to think about it. What'd Roan say? Roan was like, PFT planted the seed. He might as well water it. I'm going to think about that. It was wild. You're going to get a Republican elected, PFT. Congrats, <laughs> man. I'm just saying, like, like, come on, guys. Like, just look at the policy points on the website before. No, you know, I, don't, I don't agree with the majority of shit you say. I'm not supporting your run for fucking I'm, You don't have to support it. You don't have to support it. I'm just saying, yeah, just no. give, give it a gander. No. You don't I, have to I, support it. I you talk to you for six hours a week. I don't have to look at your policies to know what you stand for. I know you that. might be surprised by some of them. I, I, I will not be surprised. I'm, I might be doing some trust busting. You might be doing some trust busting. The fuck is trust busting? <sighs> Breaking up wait, big monopolies. Wait, wait, wait in store. Billy for Congress. Is Billy for Congress.com? No, it's no, no, no. It's, it's Bill Cotter for Congress.com. Bill Cotter for Congress. Okay, let's check out your policy points. Billy, real quick, where do you stand on on uh, tax rates for billionaires? Um, one definite tax rate that impacts the district is the salt deductions. That is something I definitely uh, want raised. Um, if we get to Congress, I mean, it if for a for a state that spends so much money on uh, infrastructure and uh, you know, uh, basically fighting crime in a lot of areas, uh, we should not pay as much in federal taxes. Um, and I think a lot of people in my district, a lot of constituents would agree that. And uh, that is definitely 
a uh, tax deduction I can vote for. Where do you stand on tax rates for billionaires, Billy? <laughs> well, <laughs> that that rate would apply to no, I mean federal everybody. income tax, federal income tax, federal in- income tax, income tax well, rate. If you are making billions of dollars, you should pay your percent share in taxes. That is just common sense. Hey, so I'm, no, I'm, at, we'll see. I'm at Bill Cotter for Congress.com. This is a donation link. No, no, there's they, they they've restructured it. They have. Uh, I mean, I yeah, just scroll down, scroll down. Send the it's link in the chat. I, it's it's there. You just gotta scroll down. Contributions to WinRed are not deductible. Charitable donations, federal contribution rules. There's, you, there's nothing else. If you scroll down, I can't. Oh, is that on mobile? Did you accidentally press donate at the top? No, nigga. Well, you may have you. accidentally pressed donate at the top. I promise you, I didn't donate anything. I know, no, but by accident, just just click the link. It takes you right there. What link? In the chat. Yeah, it works on mobile too. Okay. It, mm-hmm. There was a point where we only had a donation button, but when you're, you know, trying to start a campaign from, you know, grassroots ground level, you pay for what's going to help run the campaign. So instead of building a whole website, we just built a donation link first. I mean, I think that's, that's, that's called financial responsibility right there. Don't spend money you don't have. Secure the border. I'm going to take that to Congress. Billy, so one one of the Fire issues you have ID. on the website here that I actually don't understand. And Which I, one? I, I would like you to explain to me because I don't know what this means. Um, but I hear people talk about it all the time. Balance the budget. What, we, does ba- what does balance the budget mean? Like many business owners, households, and tons of people across the country who competently balance their financials, you have a stream of money coming in. And you have a stream of money coming out. Mm-hmm. So we're going to try to balance the budget and ensure that like many millions of Americans across the country, the government is as financially responsible as individuals. But so, the government, the government's different from a household. Right. But it essentially is kind of the same in that our government collects tons of money in taxes and it spends tons of money on a multitude of things. And a lot of the wasteful spending can be voted against. And I will be a person who will try to vote against wasteful spending. Okay. I think that's something we can agree on. Do you think that eliminating wasteful spending actually, you know what? Okay. I'll, yeah. I'll let you, I have, I have follow-up questions, but we'll wait for a different day for those. I want to get Arian's reaction to your website. Well, I mean, it's just a bunch of like vague ass bring back jobs. Like, what the fuck does that mean? Bring I agree with that. I, I like the bring back jobs policy. Okay. What, do you, what are you going to do to bring back jobs? Well, vote against foreign. Like, there, there are a lot of bills in regards to shipping out certain programs. And there's bills that you can vote on, like the CHIPS Act. The CHIPS Act brought tons of jobs back to the country. And it was... It did because it... I No, I, I agree. That was a democratic policy, though. You're. It was quite bipartisan. It was a democratic policy. I think it was proposed by Democrats, um, but it was by bipar- it was bipartisanly supported. Okay. So I'm. By the way, I'm not against. Just because someone is a Democrat does not mean I would not want to work with them. I just want to see. I want to see Billy in a debate. I want to see that content so bad. I want to see. Um, like, if if you do get to a further election, I want to see people like writing stories about uh, congressmen uh, or potential congressmen. Bill Cotter photographed in gym in Hoboken. And it's just like Billy doing more reps than RFK Jr. I want to see that like in the New York post. I just want all this content about Billy. I mean, in in the same time, like if the, I don't, it's going to be, it's, it's going to suck. A lot of the stuff that's going to happen in this race is going to suck. It's going to be a lot of hard work. And like the part of me that says, Oh, don't do it. It's way too much trouble. That's the same voice that tells me not to work out in the morning. And Fighting that voice has helped me exponentially. So I'm running for Congress. They don't want you to be swole. They don't want you to pass laws. Fight that voice. Well, like they don't like they don't want well-meaning people because most well-meaning people, they don't have the crazy ambition that non-well-meaning people do. The sort of and that's why we have politicians like we do who like do corrupt things. Like actual good people don't fight through the shit because at some point they quit because they're like, you know what, this isn't worth it. 
uh, I'm not as power hungry as uh, I thought. Like I'm not as power hungry to overcome like all this adversity. Like that's a lot of the reasons why people quit. And I'm I'm trying to fight that voice that's telling me to stop because you know hopefully we'll be able to do some good. And that's kind of what I'm going for. All right. Bill Carter for Congress.com. Thanks, guys. Billy, Billy Good. Opponent's bad. I want all the good things and none of the bad things. Exactly. Like that. Honestly, yeah. We can we can run with that. It's good. It's good. That differentiates you from some some of the other candidates who want some bad things. Not Billy. Just well meaning. Do the right thing. All right. Well, that does it for nano dosing today. Hope you guys had a good one. We'll be back on Thursday for a new episode. Um, do we have anything else that we want to talk about today? Congrats, Big T. You fired your women's basketball coach. Yeah, we're we're getting serious about the Lady Vols again. We're gonna we're gonna get a big dick hire. Big dick hire. Yeah. For the Lady Vols. I'm just gonna leave that. Yeah. Okay. We'll see you guys on Thursday. Mm. Mm.